going on as some people begin to uh, acknowledge from the Christian faith, uh, acknowledging the, uh, the uh, death and the resurrection of Christ, um, and from the um, uh, Jewish faith, uh, acknowledging the Passover, which was uh, ordained by God back in Exodus as a part of the uh, uh, exit out of Egypt. And so um, it's a time when these two roads intersect, and uh, we're hoping that it will be a time for uh, prayer for reflection regardless of your faith uh, so that you will be safe and you'll not get caught up in all of these things that are going on. Now, I want to bring us back locally for a moment, um, and I want to remind you that uh, you can reach us at 858-251-6111 uh, in terms of uh, comments or questions, whatever you might have. But I want to bring us back to uh, an issue, which is a front-page story this week with the Voice and Viewpoint. And this week, we are looking uh, very closely at the church burnings that have taken place. And we know that uh, we had recently three churches that were burnt in Louisiana. And we know that the person who set the fires was uh, caught, and he was the son of a local sheriff. And so um, three more buildings are destroyed. And at the same time that we were acknowledging the destruction of those churches, uh, we know there was a fire in, uh, in uh, Paris and that uh, Notre Dame Cathedral has been severely damaged. 800-year-old um, structure with uh, phenomenal history outside of being a part of the Catholic Church. And what's also been phenomenal that in the past um, 24 hours uh, following this, over a billion dollars has been donated toward the uh, restoration of the cathedral. And um, President Maroon uh, of, of France has indicated that he thinks it can be done in five years. Now, at the same time that we have the world watching the flames and all that's taking place, we got a situation over in a country called Mogadishu. And we got a, a situation going on in Mogadishu where uh, over a thousand people have lost their lives as a result of uh, 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 weather conditions. And uh, there is a call for over $300 million in, uh, I'm sorry, Mozambique is a, is a place. I mix up my countries here. Mozambique is where it is. And that there has been a call for over $300 million uh, in aid, a desperate call because the people are desperate in terms of what's taking place. And the world is slow to respond. And the question is coming up about uh, the value that's placed on a structure as opposed to the value placed on human life. And when we look at uh, the issue of how the two things are handled, uh, we can't help but have a moment to reflect and see what our own personal priorities are. Because right here in San Diego, we have issues. We have issues. Today we had a uh, committee of the city council, uh, uh, public safety and livable neighborhoods, uh, vote on a measure that the mayor sponsored, um, which would um, make it unlawful for people to uh, live in their cars, parked on public streets, uh, near schools, residential places, condos, um, and there was a, a big hearing, and many people came out who were uh, property owners, and they were speaking to the damage and the harm that was being done to the community, to the streets. And, you know, there's a, there's a great deal of uh, truth in the concern element because so many times uh, members of our homeless community uh, can uh, be destructive in terms of trash and uh, part of the issue is the city doesn't provide uh, the kind of public toilets that it could make available. And so then we have people using the streets. Um, and people are going to do what they have to to survive. Now, we can appreciate that uh, there's been movement in terms of designating uh, areas that people can park overnight. And in the southeastern community, you know, there's uh, one on Imperial Avenue. But at the same time that we're talking about where people can go park overnight. Let's not forget that right now in, in California, we are approaching $5 for a gallon of gas. 
when the rest of the country is paying like one eighty, two hundred, two dollars at the most, or two fifty, and here we are at five dollars. They say four dollars, but if you ride in a certain neighborhoods here, you will see four fifty, four seventy five, four ninety five. They're going to stop short of five. Now the explanation being given is that we have some refineries that broke down, and that we have the refineries that are doing uh, uh, transitions for. Uh, the summer driving increase, but this is always the excuse that we get about refineries having to shut down the changeover while people are being uh, gutted in terms of choosing between do I have gas to get to a safe place where I can park and sleep overnight or do I have to save that gas because I have to go to work the next day because many of these people have jobs and then why are our people homeless? Well, let's go back to the increase in homelessness, and let's look at a city that lacks a policy that deals with uh, rent control, uh, making housing available, uh, putting an emphasis on affordable housing as opposed to available housing that could become affordable housing. And uh, we got problems with that. Uh, the ability for people to, uh, uh, apartment owners, to just up the rents overnight. Um, I had a member of my church come to me last week and uh, indicate to me that they had been in uh, an apartment in El Cajon for uh, a couple of years and all of a sudden, and they paid their rent on time and they had money, and all of a sudden the landlord comes to them and say, uh, we want you out in 30 days and we don't have to give you a reason. Well, if you are under a month-to-month -month, uh, lease, you can get 30-day notice and you can be put out. But we're acting like uh, the people who are caught in this trap are separate and apart from us. Yet, if we turn the clock back to early January, late December, we'll see that we were in a situation where because of number 45 shutting the government down, a whole bunch of people were missing mortgage payments, they were missing car payments, utilities, um, in places up north, uh, Encinitas, uh, communities were establishing uh, uh, food pantries so that people would uh, bring their ID, show they were working, and uh, they could get some assistance. So a lot of us are very close to being in the very position that we're looking at. And we need to think about uh, how we help others, because in helping others, we might just as well also be helping ourselves. Uh, this is John Warren, and I'm the publisher of the San Diego Voice and Viewpoint newspaper. Uh, I'm coming to you with our weekly program from the desk of the editor where we share our observations on a number of issues and concerns that uh, are confronting us both locally, nationally, and internationally. And we welcome your comment and input because discussion uh, in the marketplace is so crucial. Uh, without discussion, uh, the people will just be led and overrun. So we want to thank you uh, for taking the time to join us. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and really get into some more things. Thank you. Have you been in a car accident? Bill collectors hounding you? About to lose your house? Your car? If so, you need to contact the law offices of Odin and Green, San Diego's oldest African-American law firm. For over 35 years, the law offices of Odin and Green have provided quality legal services for the community. They pride themselves in giving each and every client individual attention. They are located at 701 B Street, Suite 540, in downtown San Diego. Call them now at 619-702-0800. That's 619-702-0800. At Odin and Green, experience matters. Si habla espanol. Will it happen? Investments. Which ones are right for me? Insurance. How will I build my legacy? At Allen Financial Advisement, we provide solutions to your problems. Allen Financial Advisement is a full-service financial planning firm that offers financial help just where you need it. We can help make you smarter. Allen Financial Advisement provides financial advice with an educational emphasis. Get the answers by calling us at area code 858-964-2309 or visiting us on the web at A-L-L-E-N financial, A-D-V-I-S-E-M-E-N-T.com. 
is allenfinancialadvisement.com. We offer financial advice with an educational emphasis. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. Member FINRA, SIPC, and registered investment advisor Allen Financial Advisement and Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. are not affiliated. On Saturday, June 22nd, 2019, Albertsons and Bonds presents the San Diego County Fair. This year's theme is the wonderful Wizard of Oz, and it will be Oz. As we celebrate the 15th annual Gospel Festival, an all-day celebration of great gospel music on five different stages. From bands, choirs, and quartets to dance, spoken word, and hip-hop, your spirit will be uplifted with the Toyota Concert Series headliners, the incomparable legendary Clark Sisters, along with the Walls Group. I don't want to be... Don't miss the 15th Annual Gospel Festival at the San Diego County Fair on Saturday, June 22nd. With the legendary Clark Sisters and the Walls Group. For more information, go to sdfair.com. Save the date and be there because it will be awesome. awesome. I'm going her coffee, though, too. For the train to Jordan... Hello, this is John Warren again, uh, coming to you uh, with our program from the desk of the editor. Uh, I'm publisher of the 60-year-old San Diego Voice and Viewpoint newspaper, uh, serving all of San Diego County and 87 zip codes, 17 cities, and unincorporated areas. Uh, we bring the news from an African-American perspective uh, so that we realize that news is neither black nor white, but how we interpret it is key. And so uh, we also realize that so many things that we hear and see uh, that they affect us differently from the how other people might be affected. The late um, um, mayor uh, of Atlanta, Maynard Jackson, used to make the statement that when uh, white America catches a cold, black America gets pneumonia. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of uh, serious issues before us. I, I want to talk about a couple of things here and share with you. Um, I want to get back to the homelessness for a moment. And while we're doing this, uh, you may reach us on 1-858-251-6111. San Diego has a homeless task force. Uh, I've shared with the mayor for the past couple of years, and I'm going to keep pushing it with the public, that what we need is not a homeless task force, but what we need is uh, a homeless service authority with statutory uh, an institutional foundation. And so by having that, uh, we're able to um, consolidate the federal, the state, the county dollars, um, and come together with the mental health and all of the different services that people uh, are in need of that are homeless. And I've shared that uh, one of the models for this is found in the city of Los Angeles, uh, where they have such a service authority. Um, uh, on a regular basis as a pastor, I, I go up and uh, participate in their uh, interfaith uh, conferences as they talk about how they're serving the homeless from all nationalities and all, and all faiths come together to do this. So I think this is something important that we need to consider. Also, uh, notice that there's another element here to this whole issue. Um, we have people in our city and county on Section 8. Uh, we noticed that uh, this week the Los Angeles City Council uh, had to pass an ordinance uh, mandating that landlords would no longer be able to turn away people with Section 8 vouchers who were looking for housing. And they were being turned away because the landlords didn't want to. A Section 8 uh, is a subsidy uh, so that based on a person's income or need, uh, the government will pay uh, a large and sometimes maybe all except a few pennies of their rent on a regular basis. The advantage to the landlord is that he or she gets a check uh, monthly, and and uh, and the housing entities that administer Section 8, they have inspectors, they check the homes, they deal with the people that are, that are involved, and the system has worked well. At one time here in San Diego, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, the program really took off and uh, there were uh, dollars being given to developers to help them build more housing and to get people into the housing that was being built. 
today we have a situation where people are uh, see structures going up and people want to make application. And so many of the facilities, limited as they are, that are under construction, uh, many of them are already fully occupied before they even come out of the ground. We have that issue affecting us. We also have in California a Fair Employment and Housing Commission because we know there's been a rich history of discrimination uh, in terms of leasing, and we've documented this situation where uh, a black applicant goes in and you're told that the place is already rented, white applicant goes in and they get the place. And this kind of stuff is still ongoing. Uh, investigations are ongoing. So there are many challenges that are here. And what happened today in the city council really adds to that, where we get to the point that now we're going to cite and ticket people uh, in terms of where they park their cars uh, when we're in the midst of a gas crisis. And uh, I think we can do better. Uh, I, I think the mayor has made some strides in terms of designating areas, but like I said, if people can't get to the areas, it doesn't work. Um, we're not talking enough about what needs to take place here in terms of housing. Uh, this is also Fair Housing Month, the month of April. Uh, this represents the 51st year since the passage of the Fair Housing Act. And um, just recently here, and we mentioned before, there was a big conference with many of the stakeholders from the Federal Reserve Board to banks, but all of these are the people who were looking at the economics of uh, communities, jobs, housing, and one of the things that came out of this particular meeting was the observation that the way things are stacked here now, um, only maybe one out of five or ten people uh, getting employment would be able to even afford an apartment in San Diego. And so something has to be done uh, collectively other than a punitive approach to housing. At the same time, the people who are on the street, they must come and help us in this partnership. Uh, they can help us in terms of the trash, in terms of the attitude. Uh, we just can't just throw trash out of the window and because we're mad with the world and what our situation is, so we don't care. Uh, that doesn't work. Um, we could have more public uh, toilets on our streets and designated areas. In places like France, they have scenarios where they have facilities where people can uh, go into the facility. Uh, it's coin and it's automated. Um, they can go in, hang their clothes, take a shower, use the bathroom, whatever. When they finish, they come out. Uh, the place automatically will sanitize itself and be ready for the next person to use. So the world is dealing with these issues, but we are not dealing with them. And I submit to you as a listener and as a resident that if you are a person who doesn't, who does not vote, you're not registered, uh, you don't speak up, then you're going to always be in a reactionary posture to what comes. And the people making decisions will never take you seriously because they know when it comes to the ballot box, you won't make a difference. I like to remind us that there are three things that corporate and established America fears. One is lost profits if they're in business. Number two is bad publicity because it can add to lost profits. And number three is a vote in any given form that's cast against their interests. And if you grab a hold of these things and you look at history, it is the poor and those in greatest need who never vote in terms of the numbers they should. Now, one of the things that number 45 has done for us is he has energized people who never got involved before, and we can see that reflected in the new faces in the Congress, the new faces in the city council. And there is a wave now, but we want this wave to remain a substantive wave of input and uplifting assistance and not have it just teeter out and get lost. So again, um, this is John Warren, uh, publisher of the San Diego Voice and Viewpoint, and I'm coming to you uh, this evening uh, discussing uh, the issues that are confronting us and where we live, uh, asking you to pay attention, to get involved, uh, asking you to read because uh, information is power. And so that's why every week, 52 weeks a year, we publish the Voice and Viewpoint. It's not limited just to people of color. Uh, our, our banner says for San Diego's African and African-American communities, but people across the board uh, pick up our paper and read. We welcome your, 
your editorial comments, uh, emails, uh, faxes, however you want to, and we become a vessel. Uh, our paper goes to the legislature. It also goes to uh, the White House uh, as a press paper. Um, uh, many of my commentaries uh, appear in uh, a number of the 200 uh, African American uh, publications around the country on a regular basis, as I write. And so uh, we are a large number of people. And uh, one of the things we've said over the years is that a people without a voice cannot be heard. Well, not only can you not be heard, but you will not be acknowledged nor respected. And so we want to make changes in terms of that approach. I'd like to shift gears here for a moment, and I'd like to talk about uh, this church scenario. And, and we're in a holy week, and we're having uh, attacks that are taking place on churches. And I think there are two dimensions that I want to share that we understand. Yes, black churches are being burned. Uh, this week, I go back in a story uh, back as far as 2015, talking about the number of churches that have been burned and how uh, in so many instances, there's a question of whether or not the burning of the church was a hate crime. In one particular instance, uh, in June of 2015 in Greenville, Mississippi, um, it was an African-American church member that set fire to the Hopewell uh, uh, a Baptist missionary Baptist church and wrote on the side of the building, vote Trump. Uh, I mean, they got him, but uh, you know, we, it, it takes all kind of people out here in terms of things that are going on, but let's not just look at it from that standpoint. You know, all we have to do is pause and remember that prior to the passage of the 1964 civil rights act, we had a church bombed in Birmingham, Alabama, and four young black girls were killed on a Sunday morning when they were in church, just because they were in church. And so uh, the church is crucial in our community because the church is at the heart of the African-American community. And it seems like the haters understand it, but we don't want the people who are part of that community to forget this as well. And we just can't turn our backs and walk away. A couple of years ago, we saw nine people were murdered in South Carolina. They were at church in a Bible study, and an uh, individual came in, happened to be white, sat there for a while, and then took out a gun and killed all but one to leave a witness. Now, as horrible as that was in terms of what happened, I tell you what was equally distressing to me. When I saw after they arrested this individual, and he was in his orange jumpsuit, and uh, uh, they got him in Georgia, they were taking him back to South Carolina, they stopped at uh, Burger King or McDonald's so he could get a Happy Meal on his flight back. And I thought that was very interesting because I don't know how many black people have been arrested and put through uh, changes without none of that. Certainly here in San Diego, Mr. Raymond Wiley, a senior that we've talked about before who was out walking uh, in June of 2017 when the cops stopped him for having a walking stick, uh, created uh, what they said was a felony, arrested him, locked him up, uh, threw him in jail, would have kept him for three or four days if if uh, the National Action Network under Pastor Harris had not come forward. And so we have this race issue coming into the picture. And what we have to do is pay close attention to what's going on uh, so that we're not just victimized. Let us not forget that this whole issue of church, let us not forget the number of people that were killed on a Sunday morning in the, t in the church in Texas in worship. Person comes in and just kills everybody. Just let us not forget the isolated incidents of church services where people were having service and folks came in and pulled out a gun and started shooting. And let us truly not forget how the mother of Dr. Martin Luther King was in church sitting at the piano and Dr. King's father was in the pulpit and a gunman came in and killed her in church in the midst of the church service. And so the attack on, on uh, believers is a tremendous attack, but we cannot abandon our faith. We cannot abandon uh, and react in, in such fearful manners that we just give in and give up. Um, there is an element out here that is being fueled by the attitude of the occupant of the White House. And this is real. Hate activity is up. Violence is up. Uh, people are being energized. And let us not forget 
uh, the Muslim sister, Ayan Omar, uh, who is under attack in Congress. She's under attack because she speaks up and she has thoughts. And it's very interesting that people are going after her, yet members of Congress, members of Congress have immunity in terms of when they speak and what they say. Okay, and now we want to have this. Where was this same level of anger when President Barack Obama was giving a State of the Union address and this racist member of Congress from South Carolina hollered out in violation of all protocol and called the president a liar? I didn't see any effort to put him out of Congress, and yet we want to come after this sister because she's outspoken. We can't sit back and let a handful of people who want to speak up and speak out give the impression that they represent public policy and opinion. We must speak up and we must be as vocal. We saw the attack, the attack on Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, all of a sudden, we have a situation where people are beginning to say, oh my goodness, this is a horrible uh, scenario. This is uh, These people are radical and they're evil. That's not true. We are entitled to have an opinion, a First Amendment guaranteed right. We see where uh, uh, the brother uh, who was uh, killed by the police in New York in a chokehold, and we saw it on television in plain view over a couple of cigarettes, and how now this week, two years, three years later, we have a statement coming out from the police saying, that they did nothing wrong. Well, maybe they just didn't see the same video that we saw because I saw four or five people on him and choking him and him on the ground. He was not in a threatening position. He didn't have a gun or anything. He was face down, and yet they found no harm, nothing wrong with how he was treated. And this scenario is being across the country as people see that it's okay to have these level of attacks. So we have to speak up. Uh, we have to be supportive of those who are afflicted the same as we are. Our hearts go out to any family, any loss of life based on the radical hatred that's among us. We are not forgetting the people who died in Las Vegas, um, a horrible scenario. We're not forgetting the people that were killed in Christchurch, New Zealand, because they were uh, in the mosque praying, or the people that were killed in Philadelphia who were in their mosque praying. We're not forgetting these people, and yet we cannot just be silent. And the problem right now is that this president is able to just speak and say and do anything he wants, and the media is giving uh, so much attention to him. But where are those people who can do something about what's being said? And I want to come back and and talk a bit about that in a moment, uh, because we have issues that are going on. So this is John Warren. I'm publisher of the San Diego Voice and Viewpoint. Uh, our number is 1-858-251-6111. And uh, we are uh, having a, a, a discussion, I hope, with you in terms of sharing information, and I hope that uh, uh, you will share some of your views and reactions with us. Thank you. When faced with the unexpected loss of a loved one, no one can fully be prepared to know the next steps to take. The emotional toll alone is oftentimes too difficult and hard to bear. At Preferred Cremation and Burial, we're here to help and serve you. Our trusted team of professionals have one goal, and that's to provide you and your family with the very best in quality and service. We'll guide you every step of the way in making informed decisions that truly honor the memory of your loved one. Preferred Cremation and Burial is located at 6406 University Avenue in San Diego. Call our offices today at 619-584-7000 or visit our website at www.preferredcremation.org. Preferred Cremation and Burial offers excellence in service. Call us today at 619-584-7000. We're here to serve you. Fried chicken and waffles, fish and chips, 
shrimp and hush puppies, red beans and rice, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, candy yams, cornbread, gumbo, sweet potato pie, red velvet cake, and peach cobbler. Are you hungry yet? Well, make your way on down to Louisiana Famous Fried Chicken and Waffles. It's a great taste to visit. Located at 2850 National Avenue in the city of San Diego. Stop by today and check out our daily specials, family value packs, and vegetarian options. Louisiana Famous Fried Chicken and Waffles is the place where you can also get JT Sweet Tea. Country made, country sweet. Now family, if you like good southern food, go down today. Louisiana Famous Fried Chicken and Waffles. 2850 National Avenue in the city of San Diego. Louisiana famous fried chicken and waffles. It's a great taste to visit. Again, this is uh, John Warren coming to you with our program from the desk of the editor. Uh, an opportunity to talk and interact with you. We have a caller, and we want to take this call and uh, continue the conversation. Hello? Yeah, hello? Yes. yes hi. Hi. Okay, so, so I've been kind of chiming in, and I uh, came, in, uh, came in on when you were saying that, you know, about people voicing their opinions, and, you know, then you went on to, um, you know, Donald Trump and, you know, how the... the how the, the church killings and all that, that's all sad. You know, I mean, that's, that's really sad. And um, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But here's the question I want to ask. What do you say about all these fake pimp pastors out here that has a church building on each side of the Pope corner house around the hood, robbing them, Telling them uh, about Malachi 3.8, okay? <laughs> Pimping them out of their money. I mean, that's that's wrong. They lied to the people, and they're and they doing it so cold because, you know, they selling a product from God. I mean, they worse than they colder than the pimps. They colder than the drug dealers. They'll look at you in your face, tell them, if you don't pay your tithe, you're going to hell. Pay your tithe. Expect to check in the mail. Well, let I me mean, say that. What's up with that? Okay. I, I really want to thank you for your uh, comment and your question. Uh, in the uh, uh, transparency, I happen to be a pastor, uh, but um, I certainly don't agree with, the, with what's being done in terms of what you said, that people are doing this. I think you're absolutely right. A lot of people are being taken advantage of and always have been because they're desperately looking for leadership. But I believe very much that uh, a church should not be a place that you stay until death do you part. Uh, that should only be for marriage. And so if you find that you're in an environment where you're not being fed the word uh, and there's nothing being taught and, and people are uh, more emphasis on money than on souls, then we have to encourage people to seek another place, uh, look for another place of worship. And there are other places of worship. Um, that are not out there seeking the fleece, the sheep. I'm as looking we for say. a free church. Please, can you help me? Yeah. No well, tithing, no requirements for every Sunday. You know what I mean? Because I don't see that in the Bible. You know what I mean? And what's up with the Easter and Christmas? Those are pagan holidays. What does bunnies and chicken eggs got to do in, in egg hunts have to do with you the know, resurrection of Jesus Christ? Well, let me say that. Tell me that. Tell okay. me. Well, first of all, a holy hustle. well, let me answer you. First of all, the, the bunny and the egg has nothing to do with Resurrection Sunday. All right. And so that they are pagan holidays that have been uh, brought into society. Well, the same thing with Santa Claus. I mean, you know, Santa Claus, uh, the the manger. Uh, to the shopping mall. And, and so these things will happen among us. Um, you need to find a teaching church. We have a teaching ministry at Eagles Nest Christian Center uh, where we study the words. You bring your Bible. We look at it from the standpoint of what the word says. I appreciate what you said about Malachi 310. But so far, uh, for those who don't know, Malachi 310 is where God says, bring in the offerings, uh, the tithes and offerings, and take care of his house. And so there are split opinions uh, in the faith in terms of tithing, in terms of uh, the giving of offerings and how all of those things go. So you, you need to just step out. Uh, 
We meet on Sunday mornings. Uh, we have a Bible study from 9 till 11 at 3619 College Avenue. And uh, our services at 1130 are open. There's no dress code. There's no fleecing of money. You give what you want, and you come, and hopefully your questions are answered and your needs are met. Uh, so you're good, and I thank you for your call. And uh, keep that fire because people like you are going to help us rescue the rest of those who are out there that need to be rescued. Thank you. Uh, again, our number is uh, 1-858-251-6111. And, you know, her question comes at a very uh, pivotal time. Yes, we are in a Holy Week and people are celebrating. I know on Friday at one of the churches in the community and all through this week they're doing the last sayings of Christ. And uh, on the East Coast where I come from, the Sunday before, which would have been this past Sunday, Palm Sunday, they used to get out palm branches and pass them out. So there's a lot of tradition and ritual associated, but Christ didn't bring us tradition and ritual. You know, Christ represents God's way for man to reach him. And so and we need to take advantage of that, but we need to go into the word to understand further how it works. We need to not be ashamed uh, of what we, what we believe in our faith. Uh, we believe, I believe right now we're living in a time that everybody is out of the closet except the believers. And so the believers need to come out and, and be vocal and get involved. Don't get angry. Just open your Bible. Just pray about it and ask God to send you to a right place. And he'll send you to uh, a word teaching church. Don't worry about the pimps on the corner and, and all of the things that you're talking about. Uh, the Lord says that he'll take care of those. He, we don't have to take care of them for him. And we don't want to be distracted from uh, worship and our own salvation and doing the things that he's called us to do because we're busy fighting a battle he didn't ask us to fight. The word says the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord. The word says not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So God don't need our help on the battle. Let's let him take care of it. Amen. And we want to move. Uh, we want to move from there. So I really thank you for your call. Um, and, uh, we still have a number of issues that, that are confronting us as we move forward here. Um, we are in a scenario where all of a sudden people are coming out of the woodwork, uh, to run for president and, and folks are lining up to give money and the whole bit, but we need to look ahead right now. This is 2019, 2020 is coming. Now's the time for us to plan. Now's the time for us to decide. What are the issues? What do we want to take place? What do we want to happen in the state of California? Um, we seem to have obtained a very progressive governor in this state, but at the same time, we are on the front line of the whole immigration issue with people flooding into this country. When do we stop talking about Trump and his policies when the Congress of the United States and the U.S. Senate are able to get together? If they want to stop uh, the whole idea of access to this uh, uh, country in terms of the way people are coming in, humanitarian crisis, all they have to do is pass a law. They can pass a law and they can shut it down. They can restrict the number of people coming. They can do all those things. But I think we need to look closely. We don't need a president who is deciding that, well, we're going to bring people in, but we're going to stick them in those cities that say that you're not going to work with immigration, what we've called, he's called sanctuary cities. Um, we have places in this country where they say there's a tremendous shortage of workers because people here don't want to do farm work. We don't want to pick strawberries or grapes or tomatoes. No. So the people who want to do the work uh, are shut out of the country and not being allowed to come in. And this is not the first time this has happened, folks. Back in 1964, 65, we had a program called a Becerro program. And the Becerro program allowed people to come into this country uh, from Mexico and, and work in terms of the seasonal work that was being done and then return to their place of origin. Even before Becerro, years before that, we had the same thing happening in Florida where we had the people coming in from the islands, from the Bahamas. They would come in, they would work the fruit orchards, and then they would return home. And so we've had ways of having people come into the country but this new wave of uh, our, our families and children, we have to do more to, to deal with this other than just take a punitive attitude. Uh, we're moving toward being isolated in a big way, and it's unfortunate. Uh, we look at what happened today in terms of the shifting policy on Cuba, 
and the breaking down of what President Obama had begun to build as a relationship. We cannot afford to have a hostile relationship with Cuba when it's so close to the United States and Russia and our other enemies would love to do what we went through with the Bay of Pigs, come back, place missile sites and everything right there uh, within striking distance of us, and now we are vulnerable and exposed. So we need to wake up, as they say, smell the coffee, get involved, and start looking. Let's talk to the people that we have in Congress. Let's put some pressure if the Republicans are going to stand fast behind Donald Trump on every insane thing that he does, then let's go after those members. Let's go into their districts. We did this back in the 70s. We were fighting to get home rule in the District of Columbia, and people were fighting against us, and we organized in that city and sent teams into the congressional districts of every person that was opposing what was taking place. We can do that again. So we need to wake up and get involved and get information. Uh, again, our number is one 251 61 one one, and uh, I'm coming to you with from the desk of the editor, as publisher of the San Diego Voice and Viewpoint newspaper, uh, believing very strongly that the people without a voice cannot be heard, and we certainly would like to hear your voice. We'll be right back. Make Jesus famous. Hey everybody, I want to tell you about a brand new clothing line that makes a bold statement: Fresh Fake Clothing, a brand encouraging hope, faith, truth love, and being unashamed in spreading the good news for Jesus Christ. Feeling a little hesitant in sharing your faith? We can help with that. We encourage you to wear it. Stand with us as we stand with you in sharing your faith in Christ Jesus. Visit our website, freshfaith.com, without the E, F-R-S-H, faith.com, and check out how we creatively incorporate the Word of God in fashion. So again, visit us at freshfaith.com, for more apparel and gear that represents, pushes, and spreads the love for Jesus Christ. So again, be strong and courageous and make Jesus famous. When faced with the unexpected loss of a loved one, no one can fully be prepared to know the next steps to take. The emotional toll alone is oftentimes too difficult and hard to bear. At Preferred Cremation and Burial, we're here to help and serve you. Our trusted team of professionals have one goal, and that's to provide you and your family with the very best in quality and service. We'll guide you every step of the way in making informed decisions that truly honor the memory of your loved one. Preferred Cremation and Burial is located at 6406 University Avenue in San Diego. Call our offices today at 619-584-7000 or visit our website at www.preferredcremation.org. Preferred Cremation and Burial offers excellence in service. Call us today at 619-584-7000. We're here to serve you. On Saturday, June 22nd, 2019, Albertsons and Bonds presents the San Diego County Fair. This year's theme is the wonderful Wizard of Oz, and it will be Oz. As we celebrate the 15th annual Gospel Festival, an all-day celebration of great gospel music on five different stages. From bands, choirs, and quartets to dance, spoken word, and hip-hop, your spirit will be uplifted with the Toyota Concert Series headliners, the incomparable legendary Clark Sisters. Along with the Walls Group. I don't wanna be don't miss the 15th Annual Gospel Festival at the San Diego County Fair on Saturday, June 22nd. With the legendary Clark Sisters and the Walls Group. For more information, go to sdfair.com. Save the date and be there because it will be awesome. awesome. Again, this is John Warren, uh, publisher of the San Diego Voice and Viewpoint newspaper, coming to you with our program from the desk of the editor, uh, welcoming your input and your conversation. You know, it was Thomas Jefferson who said that eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. And I believe that a lot of us have gone on vacation 
uh, based on the Civil Rights uh, Act and the passage. And uh, some of us feel that we have arrived. But if we stop and look at the statistics, uh, our earning power is still less than our white counterparts. Uh, black women are still uh, getting paid less. Uh, our health issues are still greater than uh, than uh, other people here. As a matter of fact, uh, next week, The Voice and Viewpoint is publishing uh, a special issue on the status of black health. And we're going to be talking about uh, black health issues, not only in San Diego, but nationally in terms of what's happening to us. And I believe that a lot of us are living uh, with the problem of uh, uh, what I call post-traumatic race syndrome. Um, because it's the, it's the burden of being black in a situation where uh, racism is ever present, uh, ever subtle. Uh, people uh, will always try to convince you that it doesn't exist. Uh, but I kind of feel like the Supreme Court justice, when asked about uh, pornography, he said, I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it. And so I know racism when I see it and experience it since I've been black all my life. And... Uh, People haven't always been welcoming, but the key for us is not to get hung up on the rejection, but to get hung up on the commitment to go further than we've gone before. Um, I salute uh, Tiger Woods this week in uh, getting another green jacket, winning the Augusta Masters. Uh, now everybody loves him. Uh, Donald Trump wants to bring him to the White House and give him the Medal of Freedom Award. Um, and I hope that uh, this time in his uh, restoration took him 10 years to come back from all the things that he went through both personally and emotionally and physically. I mean, here's a man that at one point he couldn't even bend over, back surgeries and the whole bit, and yet he changed up his game. He got involved. And, you know, black people have always been golfers, but it took Tiger Woods to really break it open in terms of letting us uh, really come and get involved. And it's very interesting. Uh, this is like his fifth or sixth green jacket. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a time that was unheard of or unthought of that a black man would ever even uh, go the limits of professional golf. And some of us might not remember, but right after uh, he started playing in the Nationals and won his jacket, they had to redesign the golf course. Kind of sounds familiar. They changed the rules of basketball after we started playing. Because uh, everywhere we go, the changes. And let us not forget the Williams sisters and what they did for tennis. And so we excel at every place. We excel academically. Uh, as much as I dislike uh, him taking a position as Secretary of HUD, uh, we could not take away from uh, Dr. Ben Carson uh, his groundbreaking uh, surgery in terms of uh, what he did as a neurologist, a separation first time of... Uh, twins that were joined as they were. Um, and so none of us are perfect, but we want to do something that um, uh, Alex Haley uh, used to tell uh, someone close. He would say, find the good and praise it. And sometimes it's very hard, especially in this business that I am, because uh, we found over uh, the years of publication that uh, a lot of people only want bad news. They don't want good news, and, and so, but the gospel itself is the good news, okay? And so we want, we want good news. And so we want to thank you for uh, 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 allowing us to share some time with you. We want you to know that uh, you can go to Android or to the uh, Apple Store, and you can download the GOD Radio 1 app. And when you put that app in your phone, uh, if you're driving and you have Bluetooth, you want to listen to gospel radio, you can do so. The programs that we've done so far are uh, both uh, all archives. And so when you go to uh, our website, Voice and Viewpoint, uh, we have a link to the sites that we have here. Uh, the event that we had earlier, our gala during Black History Month, streamed on the site. Those things are still available. Within the archives of our site are past uh, editorials and, and comments and issues. And so the things that you have missed, you are able to still pull up and take advantage of. And we want to encourage you to do so. We want to feed your mind, feed your intellect, um, shut out some of the stuff that you're listening to. Uh, you know, you drive down the street and there's all this boom, boom, bang, bang. And uh, let's look at how we can pull together 
uh, to be more helpful one to another. Uh, it has often been said that uh, our demise might have started with integration. And I like to remind people that the whole reason for integration in the first place was a very old fashioned idea that if you put salt and pepper in the same shaker, you can't throw out one without the other. And we saw what was happening in terms of segregated uh, schools. When we integrated schools following 1954, they put black students in the same building, but then they put them on separate floors. Um, and so we had to push, and I'm very thankful for uh, Adam Clayton Powell and uh, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, uh, public accommodations uh, mandating that if people receive federal funds, there had to be equality in terms of how folks were treated. We do not want to just live in the past. We are still alive and we are making uh, history for tomorrow. We have an obligation to look out for more than just ourselves. And so a uh, great poet once said that the lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. And we want to hope that you will be leaving footprints and that the sands will not look like you never passed over. Uh, we are here not just for ourselves, but for others. Uh, we encourage you to, um, if you are not doing so, restore some prayer to your uh, daily schedule. Uh, get back into worship. Don't look at church as an Amway meeting, but look at church as an opportunity um, to share information, to come together with believers, for the word says, forsake not the assembling of the brethren. And so we're encouraged. I want to remind you that when we did the battle of the Civil Rights Act, that battle was won on our knees. That battle was won with prayer in addition to people coming together. I want to also remind you that we can never have unity um, without the ability to talk to and work with one another. Um, the uh, organization Black Men and Women United. Uh, we meet at the Voice and Viewpoint every Tuesday morning uh, from 8 till about 9.30. Uh, if you're African American, you are automatically a member. Uh, we share views, concerns across the board. There's no money collected. There's no nonprofit structure. It's a loose association of people who are concerned about our community and the issues in our community. And we're the ones that bring you the community forums, the town hall meetings in conjunction with Voice and Viewpoint. And we must stay actively engaged. We're only 6% of this county's population. We're very few in number, but there are enough of us to make a tremendous difference in terms of what we do. And so I thank you uh, for listening. We hope that you will uh, pick up a paper, read. If you go to get the Voice and Viewpoint and you purchase it a newsstand, please just take one copy. And, and not take others. Uh, every week we're experiencing a theft of some 40 percent uh, because good-hearted people think that uh, if I'm in the paper or my mom is in the paper so I could just grab them all and pass them out. And you do a disservice for those who come behind you. This has been John Warren, publisher of The Voice and Viewpoint from the desk of the editor. Thank you. God bless you. Put prayer in your life. I was gripping in the kitchen, I was sick, tripping, I was gripping, I was, I was running pills, Xanax, Ox, I was, I was running drills on my Ox, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was gripping in the kitchen, I was sick, tripping, I was gripping, I was, I was running pills, Xanax, Ox, I was, I was running drills on my Ox, I was, Come on up, when I was down, I went left, I was not right, I was no good, I was in the hood, weren't blown, blown like a cop fight, no stop sign, no stop light, just top white, just top white, no cap, my top flight, saved by faith, not sight, see I started as a thug, uh, down five times, two toes, started in the mud, had to shift gears like two flows, I was all about the plug, but I started out with like two O's, kept on ringing up, kept 
still I had chickens in the coop like two doughs. Next thing you know, the Lord called me. I ain't even know the Lord's story. I ain't even know the Lord saw me. I was covered by the Lord's glory. But I kept on keeping on. Hustle till the work was all out. No clothes, clothes like cool new. I would lead the crew and go cars route. Used to stretch work like Jane Fonda. On the road in the same Honda. I get home, gotta grab the chrome. I said, still warm about the same drama. The Lord above strike opposition like drone bombs. Kept a G with no comma. Change the game, you know I'm a that's old mama. Kitchen, I was sick, I was crippin', I was I was running fields and I was I was running drills on my ops, I was I was I was I was crippin' in the kitchen, I was sick, I was crippin', I was I was running fields and I was I was running drills on my ups, I was To be quite frank, honestly, destined for hell, probably But Jesus came quick, gave me that blood work, phlebotomy And a potter's hand on pottery, I didn't understand theology But obviously he delivered me from a broken home in these cold streets From a G-Pack to an OZ, till I purchased the whole thing on a 16 going OT Louisiana, New Orleans, with triple beams and wicked schemes Then the Lord, yeah, he intervened, I was coked up and he got me clean It was nothing else but a crime Scene. This flesh is yes, enticing, and it always despises him. Be careful compromising, cause evil comes in all disguises. Keep throwing hell with those wicked spells, bro. Ain't no socializing. We went equipped, sent to the trench, advising, mobilizing, analyzing, strategizing. For his kingdom, we be riding. With these demons, we colliding. Yeshua's what the doc's prescribing. What a clue clutch keeps striking for those blue chuck indictments. Had to put it all in writing. Put my homies out, them I was cooking in the kitchen, I was sitting, tripping, I was gripping, I was, I was running pills and I was, I was running drills on my ops, I was, I was, I was, I was cooking in the kitchen, I was sitting, tripping, I was gripping, I was, I was running pills and I was, I was running drills on my ops, I was. The turkeys were hurt as an issue. They asked around and they heard them official. I left the hood with some urban epistle, but I came back as an urban epistle. Heard on a mission, urban ambition. The hustle is working and furnish the vision. RPS minister worship the vision. We come together to murder the vision. The body we hurt me for poppy. I potty on all beats a hobby. I'm probably somebody whose folly was highly appalling and sloppy. Posse apostle, God who we copy. I'm just a servant, I'm comfortable serving. My verse is nice, hustable version. Wraps in my head, somewhat of a turban. I'm turned like an elbow, you know that we work. I'm the coach of this urban Maya for the coach of the cur- Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me in, bring me in, bring me in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to the West Siders Wild Worship Wednesday where you tapped in with your boy Dante and the homie J-Rock. The homie B Smooth on the ones and twos. Um, J-Rock. What's good? What you got for us today, Brody? Oh, man. Y'all in for a treat. <laughs> Tonight, we got Illuminate in the building, man. Illuminate, what's good? Oh, what's that? And what's your family? Go and put on them, them, them radio, them yeah, headphones yeah. here, baby. Yeah, man, we got a, uh, we got Illuminate in the building, and we, we got a topic that a lot of people struggle with nowadays, man. I think it's, 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 more, um, it's more noticeable now because people make it noticeable than they did um, in previous years. Right, right. Um, so I'm going to keep it at that and go and let uh, Tay bring that, <laughs> bring that one in there, baby. Yeah, man. Uh, tonight, tonight, um, we're going to tap in on, on racism. Ooh. Racism. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, we. Oh, we. Um, I was, I know last week I said we was going to tap in on the N word, but I think, I think it's best that we, we build to it because the N word means nothing or, or it holds no validity unless you tap in on racism. Right. 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 So I think we tap in on racism this week. Um, and like I said, we just going to have some real talk, real conversation. Um, we, 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 we going to come from a real place. And along with that, we're going to play some real music, yeah. some real Christian hip hop music from, 
from dudes that just don't know they don't only rap about it, they are about it. Right. You know what I mean? So um yeah, you tapped in to GODradio1.com. This is the West Side's Wild Worship Wednesday, and we finna tap into some more music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We- of a lonely spark uh, it was placed within a prison that is only dark the and these voices from the lord telling me go to war go to yeah war. it got me feeling like i'm joan of arc uh, and if you ain't with the business homie don't embark uh, we walk by faith here you all gonna need more than heart uh, i give honor to the modern day martyrs for the gospel uh, they are yelling when they get their melon torn apart uh, yeah they said they selling death to little kids i don't feel right. it is when they saying that it's only art right. and he put me here to minister I'm in it, bruh. Belly of the well, I'm playing Jonah's part. No conflict resolution on a battlefield, nah. Uh, Avenger of the faith, I got a warrior's heart. Uh-huh. And if S.H.I.E.L.D. got my back, what? plus I keep that iron, man. In essence, I am Tony Stark. Yeah, we gon' ride it till the wheels pop. Wheels pop. Huh. And I'ma roll it till the rim crack. Uh-huh. Time waits for no one, so I don't waste time. Waste nah, time. on my grind, homie, I been that. Been that. Yeah. I get it in till there's nothing left. Yeah. If you ain't with the business, homie, stay clear. Yeah. Every one of my hogs is from the heartland. Yeah. So get down and get drowned in Cape Fear. Bizzle. Ready for the war, dog. Never bow to the Pope, but a whore, dog. Mind clear, so the line clear when the Lord call. Post up on the block like a pick where they hit you with a tech if you run up on the court wrong. They lock us in the cage like we animals. So we run up in the cage with the antidote. Trying to dodge bull like a matador. I hear they hating on the squad, but they don't even matter though. Cause they ain't out here with the have nots. They behind the doors with the padlocks. Trying to tell us how to do what they don't do. I guess everybody bored on their laptop. Whole team winning this year. Made that known the beginning this year. Rap game don't know how to deal with this here. But everybody living gon' feel it this year. Real talk. Yeah, we gon' ride it till the wheels pop. Huh. And I'ma roll it till the rim crack. Time waits for no one, so I don't waste time. Nah, on my grind, homie, I been that. Yeah, I got it in till there's nothing left. If you ain't with the business, homie, stay clear. Every one of my hearts. From the heartland, yeah. so get down and get drowned in Cape Fear. I don't really get it, homie. Tell me what you're waiting for. The Father in heaven and already called you a couple of times. When you and Nancy, you break your phone. Post it up in front of the window, looking at everybody up on the block, but you're afraid to go. You wouldn't even know what you're finna do with the gift that they giving you the spirit. You ain't afraid to flow. So tell me what you hesitating for. Look at everybody be sleeping up in the freezing cold. Knowing that you got a couple of jackets even up in the closet. Boy, you ain't finna take them, those. You better be looking the way they do it. If you're to get through it, you wonder what the Father gotta do to find it. He do what he wanna do with you. What he gotta take away for you to finally get up and make a way to go. Why you wasting time? Knowing you're looking the what I'm looking at, homie. I know you see the signs. We both looking up at the same moon, watching the turn color blood red, living in the end of time. Look at every one of the earthquakes, the numbers, places, people are being left to die. You better be listening to the rumors of war blooming over the dead bodies while the baby's crying. Climate change, you better look at what the violence spraying. You finna be able to hide your chain, cause all over the world like parents are finna get parents sick. You better get ready, cause it's about time to bang. Sand is slipping up at the hourglass, homie. You remember you the one that said it loud and clear. Christ coming back soon, tell me what you finna do, cause I'm getting sick of spitting this rhyme in front of the mirror. When Christ almost here, you better mom already. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me where's the time to Life, I 
I'm never leaving. That would be treason. In this world, I was a heathen. Gotta believe me. All the sin I did wouldn't cut it. He didn't leave me. So I'm in for life. Push that light like I'm pushing white. Like a school kid, I push the fight. Life ain't no looking right. So high like I took the fight. Look around, there's no hope in sight. But it's hope in Christ. Used to hang out to the rope was tight. Cut the ties to my hope is life. Throw some more, you don't need to sprite. I like to sit back and look at the heart. It's deep in the hood. Look what we started. Hawk my ministry going the hardest. Trials come, I'm not even bothered. Pushing the father, they spitting that lava. Ah, but all that rap, I ain't worried about. Shot rack, what I'm worried about. Miss a trip to the hood, watch us carry it out. Got a lot of friends dead, have to curry him out. Got hit with the 30 step, curry him out. Keep a score, and again, that's what I'm worried about. Going fishing on the curve, got lower them out, huh? Just open your heart, be open to change. Just know who you are, a son of the king. Yo, yo, living with this world, you never have nothing. That Teflon, ski mask to get up, theft don't run up on you with that Tetron. That chain that's on your neck, gon' take your shoes and tell you jet home. And then we hit the dope house where Jose will get his chef on. When it came to whipping work, he had the force like Luke with the blue safe. He was serving pies like them white folks like to do for the new neighbors. We hit the block with his work and made the killing and picked up some new haters. We had the fiends lined up, they ain't like that, so they came with a few gates. Asking who's the plug, but we can't give them no tip like they grew wet. They let the shotties put. And they put some of my bros in the newspaper A bitch of every columns and then folks crying out God, how could you take them? Some of my main bros died Cause they hit the corner harder than Blue Blazer I could have shared their fate But in fear I had cried out to the true savior uh, Screaming, Father God Can you please repair my soul like a shoemaker? Ooh. On that day I died And he gave me a new heart with a new nature Ooh. Then I went from dope boy to son of a king Homie, that is true favor yeah. Yeah. Living with this world you never have nothing started speaking pardon me but my first step was in the wrong direction so when i was lost it felt like i was home resting peace in the madness before it vanished weed alcohol and pcp for the sadness i'm glad it's over with the devil would attack me like a doberman he helped me with my raps but my daddy got a dope pen notorious and Pac had me fall for the dream till i got that sword from the rock now they calling me king Arthur Ashe, he aged the body, that's the reason he died. My father asked him and gladly was an easy reply. Because of that, I hit neighborhoods and knocked on doors. Church services, I rocked on tours. I'm just saying that I got my sword, and I'm about God's war. And I'm a ride on anything that is not my Lord's. Let's go to work. Living with this world, you never have nothing. It'll leave you with a dollar and a drink. Growing up, I kind of struggled with my wife through me Till I found out I was a son of the king ex go boy son of the king With that snowboy, son of the king Now I gotta go and put in work Cause I found out I was a son of the king I'm seeing the oppression of the people. Some police ain't even legal, but they got the public scared to go and shout in front of state. How am I going to say it? Cause I can no longer take it. I've been all across these states and I've witnessed that racial hatred. You can go and hate it, or you can choose to embrace it. I'm stripping my heart naked cause this topic here 
here is sacred and it's clear facts. But this world ain't trying to hear facts. The Masons in the clan is clicked up trying to kill blacks. They're keeping us enslaved, but now it's mentally got us caged up. And it's been that way for centuries. Modern day plantations are these middle penitentiaries. The way this world is turned and ain't never how it was meant to be. Go back to Genesis, check out our arts nemesis. He robs us of our peace, but he never replenishes. He's the father of every lie in the world. And that darkness coming at us is disguised as a pearl. So pay the attention. Speaking in fact, you can hate it, but it needs to be stated. Man, Jesus was black. Check the history, you can see with the clearest to proof. God is perfect and deserving to be worshipped in spirit and truth. Black boys calling me white, white boys calling me nigger. I ain't fit in, man. My mix can't have me feeling disfigured. My truthful heritage wasn't in encyclopedias. I was doomed to inherit what they depict inside the media. Got buffoons dancing a jig to entertain some whites. Selling out their own people to live their famous life. Perpetuating behaviors that cause us pain and strife. Till we rather retain some ice than regain our rights. Albert Pike, the Masonic leader, ran the KKK. Look up his political ties, you'll see the way they play. Systematic genocide of the people of color. The Luciferians and Arians sleep with each other. Split like the Red Sea. Was it the color that they saw? They clutching their purses as if I was young and thirsty. Like my people wasn't hanging on branches in front of churches. They treat us like color skin was made of sin and Dean Burks. My heart ain't bad. They can't get past what they see on the surface. I tell them, God bless you, and just keep walking in purpose. They say, get over it. With no relief from the hurt, and still getting pulled over, beaten up, illegally searching. Cousin got killed by cops. They told his mom they did a service. Three shots to the head. Close casket to service. No one was charged. What's done in the dark will rise to the surface. We still hurt. Still hurt. Still hurt. Still hurt. What it do, what it do, what it do, what it do. You tapped in to GODradio1.com. This is West Side is Wild Worship Wednesday with your boy Dante J Rock. Be smooth on the ones and twos. And right now we got Illuminate in the studio. Nate, what it do? What's going on, family? Man, it's all good, man. Um, yeah, go ahead. You can pull it to you. Pull the mic to you. Get in the mic. There you go. Now you got that. You look like you in a lap. Link back. What up, B Smooth? Digging in the scene with the gangsta lean. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> Diving in the back, sunroof top. Digging in the scene with the gangsta lean. Ooh, ooh. Why you got to hit that? Because like I can that? do it. Oh, you can. I can do it. See, we got haters in the studio, y'all. We got haters we got in the studio. Tellers. Realistically. Come on. <laughs> I ain't even no, finna. Nobody here need to sing except for I ain't, all, I ain't finna do this. Keep, that, keep your word to yourself. Vocal, but hey, J-Rock, I'm not going to go can... worship or worship, right? <laughs> <laughs> what up, young Frank? What it do? Check this out. Check this out. Man, I'm excited to have Nate in the studio. Yeah. Um, 
we kicked off with Eshan the first uh, opening night. Right. Uh, Eshan Burgundy, shout out to the homie. Yeah, shout um, out to the whole infantry. infantry. Yeah. yeah, then we had Seven Deuce and the homie Ivy last week. I just come off a tour with them. Um, What's up, shout out, Shout out to the homies. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Wichita, I won't be able to make it tomorrow because um, work. But um, I love y'all, and um, I know for a fact that um, Deuce and Ivy will put it down. Yeah, it's um, it yeah right now, um, I wanna I wanna tap in tonight, um, especially with you, Illuminate. Um, I know when you. I remember our conversation when you first even dropped that song. That song's been out what? About a year, two years now? Cool. Yeah, that song? Yeah. Erasure. Probably going on three now. Has it been that long? Yeah. I'm telling you, you're getting old. I know. Um, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I remember ha- having a conversation when you when you were writing that song. Yeah. And actually we was in a studio together and I remember um you asked me, you said, Dante, what what you think? And I was like, it need to be it need to be heard. And um I remember shooting the video. I was present when we were shooting the video for it. You was there. Um through the whole recording process, man. Um get at me right now and, and let me know, uh let the world know what inspired you to choose a topic like racism and then being a Christian hip hop artist feeling the need to address the issue. All right, so let me give you guys a kind of a precursor of where that song came from. <clears throat> the first Pray For My Hood tour we did in 2015. Right. So, I mean, obviously, you remember that. <laughs> right. That's where you, when I met initially, Right. was at the first couple stops. But by the time we had gotten to Buffalo, New York, which was probably close to the halfway point. So, for those that don't know, I'm from Richmond. Richmond is a predominantly black and Hispanic community. Um, you know, I grew up on a block with, I mean, with just a melting pot of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? But this was my first time ever being the only person that was not African American in a group. Right. And traveling the actual United States. Right. There was one time previous uh, when we did some stuff for Three Six Mafia back in my secular career, right? And we was down in, in Tennessee and Alabama, and right. that racism is something I've never seen before, right? But <clears throat> that's when I started realizing in California how blessed we are mm-hmm. because we rock with each other out here in right. the Bay Area, San Diego. You know what I'm saying? Like we rock with each other, right? But man, it's not like that when you start taking these trips out of state. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of racism. There's a lot of discrimination. I mean, you can see just the way people, people's body language is expressed when they see a group of uh, young African-American brothers or, you know, with another person of, of Hispanic or white or whatever. But, I'm, but all they see is the black, basically. Mm-hmm. They group us all in together. And there was times where we was waiting to get seated for like an hour, an hour and a half, and seeing other people come through and getting seated or whatever. And um, even just sharing in some of the experiences on a tour with my brothers Mm -hmm. and and hearing what they've had to go through just came this righteous indignation that rose up on the inside of me. And the Holy Spirit started dropping that song in my spirit in in Buffalo, New York. We was over there in Buffalo. That's when I first started that verse. And matter of fact, I finished it the last in in, te- in Texas right. is when I finished it. Come on. And so by the time we had left Texas and got back here to California. When we were driving well, back. Yeah, when we was driving back is when I had, you know, started telling you just, you know, just a revelation and just everything. And so that's when me, myself, when I when I uh, began to take more of a, um, a proactive stance in... Um, and being on these front lines and, and, and fighting against these social injustices right. and these uh, and this uh, you know the, the racial inequalities and things of that sort, you know what right. I'm saying? And I mean, you know, I come from a place where you know we had a tribal mentality as well. Right. So you know what I mean? It's it's nothing really new. Right. But in this perspective, 
and seeing how far along, you know, the, uh, the African American people group has been oppressed from basically the beginning of time, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? And there's right. been no other, no other race that's been oppressed like they have. Right. You know what I'm saying? People of color always have it worse. Right. Just period. And I'm just being honest with y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that when I seen that and, and just, you know, me, us having a relationship and right. all of my brothers, like, you know, we, we're real bros. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we real really tough. rock tough. Yeah. Right. So it's like, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, y'all, that's not happening. On, not on my watch. Not on your watch. Not I on my watch. That. Um, Be smooth. What up? Tap in with me. Um, You from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um. I've been to Chicago, like yeah, the 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 nation of Islam is is heavy, he Thick. heavy, mm -hmm. right? Heavy, 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 heavy. Um, <laughs> I actually remember a time <laughs> I go to the hood. I ride around uh, Furcon House. Man, it was like it was, man, it was like I rode up on the White House. Security <laughs> easy, security tough. Man, hold on, I'm in a residential neighborhood. And they come and ask me what I'm riding down the block for. Father, forgive me, but I ask them, what you walking up to my car for? <laughs> well, we ain't going to get into that. We, we discussed that's a, that's it. That's another story. Right, that's, right. that's, that's another B, that story. BC. <laughs> yeah, that's BC. BC. <laughs> um, but, but what is it like? Because when I went to Chicago, Chicago not like San, San Diego. It's not like California. No, not even like, close. Like, Nowhere near. You really go into a hood, and it ain't shared. It's black. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's you. You go in the store. Now I'm gonna tell you who, who be in the hood. Who be in the hood is the uh, Orientals. Oh, they 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 accept it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the Orientals <laughs> like like our karate kick. Damn, anyway, oh, anyway, right. Yeah. Like, right. one of y'all. Right. Ain't one of y'all. But what is it? Explain to me, Chicago. And why you feel that there's so much segregation still today in Chicago? Um, I, I think it's more or less like 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 your boy Illuminate was talking about. It's the tribal mentality. You know, you know, you got the you got the Latinos on on their side. That's Latin that's things. that's where you over there. You y'all where y'all y'all stay over here. But if you come over here, it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it kept it divided for for the. It's almost safe. Right. It was it was a safety measure more or less than anything because that's how we kept our unity. Right. You understand? You got the GDs. Everybody think that oh, blacks over here, Latinos over here. No, nah, it was more it was more division of, of where you grew up. Right. It was like real neighborhood. Like you you just can't step. Every I'm from the south. You get what I'm saying? Just to go to the west side and just be like yo, I'm just gonna go roll over there real quick. It's it's a no no. Right. You get what I'm saying? It it really wasn't about what you was wearing, what color you was wearing, but you you could tell by the way you walk. Or how you talk that you weren't from there, right. and then you'll get banged on real quick. And I'm I've never been a gang banger, but I've been a hustler all my life. Right. And you just can't go get money in uh, around the corner. Oh, no. So 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 in <laughs> Chicago, in Chicago, it's not it's not that white and black racism. Nah, it's grow it's, up. Huh? It's where you grow up. It's, it, so all the different races mm -hmm. war. Mm-hmm. If you cross, if you cross that path, or like one incident, one incident, like if um, my homeboy was messing with a, another a chick, was messing with a chick like that Romeo and Juliet story, you feel what I'm saying? And it got word, and it was a it was a super huge family war, and you just talking about GDs and L, and and Latin Kings just battling over a relationship right. that they was just trying to get about the game, get out the hood, get she was pregnant. You know what I'm saying? Now you got kid, you got two kids battling each other, having families battle each other based off how you grow up. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's different, but it's the same. Yeah, I was just about to say that's the same, <laughs> and even out here, I mean, it's terse. It's terse, terse mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. As far as as a, as a experiencing racism though, like where where what was that effect like? Because I know I experienced racism a few times in, in my life. I, right. I just experienced it a couple months ago in Vons. Right. <laughs> so I'm right, walking in bonds, and I turned around, and there was this lady. She she was walking with her head down, and she looked up and stopped, dead in her tracks. Right. And her and her kid, her daughter was with her. They were supposed to come get something down the aisle, but they decided to turn around and then walk the other way. And I was like, 
Hey, did you just say that? Well, right. I still got ladies that will see me and grab their purse and bring it close. Right. To me. I'm like, man, I, I'll probably be the one person to protect you in the store. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> 100. You know so, what I'm saying? So, so is it, so today are we, are we still deal, dealing with, with racism in regards to uh, color of skin? Or is it, or are we really dealing with a cultural issue? Both. It's both, but then, I mean, because you see, even prejudice, we automatically will think prejudice just only means thinking of the skin color. Right. But prejudice just means prejudging something. Right. You understand what I'm saying? We're prejudiced against a lot of different things. Right. We're prejudiced against certain stuff in the church. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it's definitely cultural. I mean, just like even the, the, the certain words that we choose to speak, they're cultural. And uh -oh. they can be traced back to being tribal. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. So, and, and then what we may see as a term of endearment amongst our culture could be looked at. Can be looked right. at as a negative for those that don't see it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Am I making sense here? No, so you're making a lot of sense. Because so it, it's something that we share. Uh -huh. Like when you come up out the mud. And and, and, oh. and you come from a, a, a hustler background or grinding or whatever, like, we have very similar mentalities. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And we've experienced a lot of the same things, just maybe in a different area code. Right. Or a different, you know what I mean? Right. So, it's it, racism is still very much alive. It's not as accepted as it once was. Right. Because it, it used to be very, very, very prevalent. Right. And like I said, down in Tennessee and Alabama is the worst I've ever seen it my whole life. Right. You know? Like, I was I was on tour, and I had met this uh, African American sister. Right. Black black girl. Right. 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 This is me before me being married. Right. So I had met the sister, and um, the next day, you know, we all go eat as a group at the spot called the Huddle House. Right. Oh, okay. The Huddle House. Yeah, the Huddle House. If you've been down south, y'all know about the Huddle House. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Y'all forgive me, man. Yeah. <laughs> My boy say he prejudiced against tithing. Let me stop. Y'all go back on. Go back on. I couldn't hold, could hold it. I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold it. But so anyways, me and the sister is in a booth, and we finishing up our meal. And the waiter says, he says, hey, I don't mean no disrespect. He said, but not everybody around here is as open-minded as I am, if you right. know what I'm saying. Right. And I'm like, I'm uh, following what you're saying, bro. And he's like, when you guys are done with that meal, I would get back on that tour bus and I would get up out of here. Right. And I said, like that? And he was like, yeah, it's like that around here. I said, well, uh, say no more, fam. Right. If they catch us, they catch us. It is what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? But so that there was that one. But I think when you come over here now in other areas, it depends on the ignorance of a person also. Right. Because ignorance is also very, I mean, anybody that's racist is very ignorant. Mm -hmm. Because to, to just write uh, any kind of people group off for anything, that's foolish. We can't right. ever do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But over here, it's it's more like swept under the rug and kept on the hush. Right. Right. With only those, I think, who they feel that they would be able to be, be you know what I mean? Share right. the ignorance around. Right. Right. Well, check this out. Check this out. We getting ready to go into some commercials, pay some bills. But when we come back, we going to tap more into I'm a, I'm, I think I'm going to dig under some skin when we get back. Oh. Hey, That's B, what you no getting nervous for? Like, you, ra <laughs> you racist? Yeah. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. You make that phone with your chest. Right now you <laughs> Right now you tapped on the west side of Wild West Wednesday right here on GODRadio1.com. Let's get it. Fried chicken and waffles, fish and chips, shrimp and hush puppies, red beans and rice, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, candy yams, cornbread, gumbo, sweet potato pie, red velvet cake, and peach cobbler. Are you hungry yet? Well, make your way on down to Louisiana Famous Fried Chicken and Waffles, 
It's a great taste to visit. Located at 2850 National Avenue in the city of San Diego. Stop by today and check out our daily specials, family value packs, and vegetarian options. Louisiana Famous Fried Chicken and Waffles is the place where you can also get JT Sweet Tea. Country made, country sweet. Now family, if you like good southern food, go down today. Louisiana Famous Fried Chicken and Waffles. 2850 National Avenue in the city of San Diego. Louisiana famous fried chicken and waffles. It's a great taste to visit. On Saturday, June 22nd, 2019, Albertsons and Bonds presents the San Diego County Fair. This year's theme is the wonderful Wizard of Oz, and it will be Oz as we celebrate the 15th annual Gospel Festival, an all-day celebration of great gospel music on five different stages. From bands, choirs, and quartets to dance, spoken word, and hip-hop, your spirit will be uplifted with the Toyota Concert Series headliners, the incomparable, legendary Clark Sisters, along with the Walls Group. I don't want to be... Don't miss the 15th Annual Gospel Festival at the San Diego County Fair on Saturday, June 22nd. With the legendary Clark Sisters and the Walls Group. For more information, go to sdfair.com. Save the date and be there, because it will be awesome. awesome. GODradio1.com would love to help you get the word out about your products, your business, your event, your ministry, your services, and more. Our advertisement campaigns are cost-effective and specially catered to meet your needs. Radio commercial ads are only $10 with a minimum purchase of $10. Advertisement packages may consist of radio ads, e-blasts, and social media campaigns. Call us up today at 858-251-6111, extension 505 and inquire about the services that are available to you. Our sales team will cater a package that fits your advertising needs. GODradio1.com is here to serve you. Call today at 858-251-6111, extension 505, for our account executive, or email us at GODradio1 at mandaterecords.com.
So they hit him with a gang injunction, huh? The homie said he got you, he made blood spill. But he only did it for the blood thrill. Plus he only did it off that drug pill. But he got you feeling like the love's real. Now you feeling like you owe him a body, so you roll and you body somebody and your body stay climbed. But the same one that molded those bodies, he is holding your body. He gon' body your body in time. Yeah. Now they celebrating hell because they feeling like they'll never get to Zion because they lost faith. Selling they soul for a little bit of fame. They gon' know it ain't no game. When they die and they see God's face. Yeah. The world's cold and hell is hot. We stuck up in this melting pot. Instead of helping them, we selling rock. Yeah. Living self is when you tell us stop. I ain't judging, I'm just stating facts. And I pray that we repeat to make the day you come get us. Look how the slum did us. You the only one with us. Regenerate our faith in that brace on my young yeah. niggas. Brotherly love overcomes our destruction. Yeah. That's the acronym for blood, right? Christ's love overcame our destruction. I guess he the only one doing blood right. Community, revolution, and progress. Huh. That's the acronym for crib, right? Christ unity is the solution to progress. I can see the only one to my crib, right? Yeah, somebody lied to us. Somebody lied to us. Somebody lied to us. Come on, somebody lied to us. You see it, somebody lied to us. I swear if somebody lied to us. They wouldn't be the ones that would die for us. Christ did it on the cross. Somebody lied to us. Shark stay low, make that home more bad. Just get me out from these constant waves. Underwater, underwater graves. Oh, I live with the shark stay low, make that home more bad. Just get me out from these constant waves. Underwater, underwater graves. Oh. Some days I get lost in these waters Want these people to stay away I just want some space in my lane again Riding through the winds and waves Make your point so human I need grace. I'm tired of my phone blowing up, and I don't want everybody in my face. I hate the place I'm in. Man, my nerves are paper thin. But if we don't repent, Lord, and seek your face, this nation won't never be great again. So I'm going in, I'm going broke again. And most cats don't know I went broke again. Got three bolts and this in my back, my friends. So I had to sit down and take it on the chin. Sideline as I write rhymes. Healing and praying for the right time. Season for the night, night time. Man, I'm just trying to stay in my right mind. Got the boss of these waters Tell these creatures to stay away Let me get in my boat and sail away Riding through winds and waves Got some days I get lost in these waters Want these people to stay away I just want some space in my life Been crash. 
but your boy still standing. And I still got passion. Man, that wind been blowing. And them waves been crashing. But your boy still standing. And I still got passion. And the brain got damaged. Then I get an injury. Every time I turn around, get hit by the enemy. I'm trying to fly while the world try and pimping me. Normally I'm poor, but today feeling Timothy. And that's quite okay. But retreat and surrender, it ain't no way. Lay it on the field every time I play. And I ain't gonna go if the Lord don't say. Worship the spirit and truth. Think I know you're in the booth. And yeah, your boy preach grace, but I'm bringing the truth. Lock loaded and cocked back. And I'm aiming at you. And I ain't gonna change the mission of the name of the crew. No. Boy, you can check my website. This still Jesus, Jesus. Cause if we don't have him, then they never come down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to West Side is Wild Wednesday. Wild Worship. Wednesday. Worship. You know, either way it looks, it is what it is. <laughs> the we up. It's Wednesday. It's full up. Up. <laughs> We got myself, J Rock. Got Dante. We got on the ones and twos, be smooth. And then we also got Illuminate in the building. Brat. Yes, yes. This is GODRadio1.com. And we're hitting on some, some great topics tonight. I think that, uh, you know, the racism is something that's definitely going around not only this part of town, but across the U.S. Um, before we went to break, you had mentioned that you wanted to kind of get underneath the skin right. of some things. And, and when Illuminate, when you were talking, you had mentioned something about... Um, <laughs> the word? <laughs> not, not only the word, but what is um, meaningful to, to each other's race. Like, you know, yeah. uh, the whites got wood, Hispanics got, S, you know, homes, S.A. S.A. or N.A. You know, um, you're true that, if you're yeah. up north. Um, you know, Samoans, they got, uh, you know, Uso, mm -hmm. Toko, Toko, Toko mm -hmm. yeah, and Blacks. Of course, we got... My nigga. Nick. Right. So, oh, with that being said, go. you know, and here we go, we're going we're gonna to go a little bit deep. Now, go for I it. know where I'm from, we have, I had some, some, some homies that were white from my hood, and, and they grew up around yeah. brothers. That's just how it was. Yeah. Um... You you would even think by even talking to them on the phone that it was black just by how they slang was. Off top. Right. You know? I'm right, right here. So right. <laughs> if I can ask you, what was that like in, in that environment growing up and, and using, you know, calling your, your, your acquaintances niggas and stuff like that? Oh, like, okay. how, how would that? So anybody that knew me mm -hmm. prior to me coming to Christ, they always know that nigga was every other word out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. Because that's just how I grew up. That's where I grew up at. And it was a term of endearment. Right. It was, that's how we embraced one another. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was a, um, I mean, catch, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I mean, come on, bro. I was pimping. I was cooking crack. I was participating in all the activities right. that everybody else in the hood was doing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they was like, hey, bro, you want us, bro. Right. You, like, you, I mean, I know your skin is that, but you, but, but Nate, you's a nigga. Right. And they would always tell me that. I'd be like, man, I'm just me, bro. I'm just being, I'm just being me. Right. And it's just a product of my environment is what it was. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you, you feel good when you're, when you're amongst your peer group, when you're amongst your brothers, people that, you know, that lay it on the line for you, when the, you lay it all on the line. Any, when you embrace one another and you know it's genuine and you know it's real, right. you know what I'm saying? It's always going to be love. You feel me? Yeah, that, something's wrong with this mic, bro. Yeah, I can't even hear them in the head. Like everybody's, on, is there any way we could turn this up more? Is that better, y'all? Is that better? Give me a uh. 
Well, here, let's do this, and then be smooth when this comes to you all. I'll, I'll give it back to you. Right. I knew I wasn't. I, I'm on oh, sorry. Oh, okay, that'd be all right. Way, way better. better. I could hear you. Be smooth. Hey, can y'all hear me? Hey, no, nah, we can always <laughs> hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna speak so loud it's gonna come <laughs> through somebody else's mic. Funny <laughs> though. Um, no, it was just always the um, where I come from, it was a term of endearment, bro, and and that was. I mean, whether you was Mexican, whether you was white, whether you was black, whether you was uh, Hawaiian, whether you was anything, if right. you was amongst all people group and you was amongst me and my partners, I mean, we was a mob. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, mo a lot of us were northerners, but, I mean, we had the, the gotta get it mob, which was super interracial. I mean, we had cats that was in it that was Mexican, Guamanian, white, Ecuadorian, black. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, myself, I'm Portuguese, Spanish, and white. But I mean, of course, I mean, wh wh whatever, wherever you grow up at, you become you become a product of that environment. So right. the the N word was always cultural, and it was never used. Right. Like I've smashed on cats for literally calling somebody an N word before. Right. right. I was right. at the club and I right. said, "What you just say?" Right. Right. And he like looked at me. I said, "What you just say to my partner, bro?" Bah! Took right. off on him. Right. I was that dude. You right. feel what I'm saying? Like right. I didn't play that. The, the, I, right. I've never played the race card ever right. in my life. Right. I've never been cool with that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, that's just the way that it was, man. I mean, it, now, if you would have taken me and, and transported me and dropped me off maybe in uh, Boston, Massachusetts or something right. like that, it probably would have been be different. different. Exactly. Yeah. Because yep. of the culture and, and the uh, whatever the environment is like around there, because that, that's what we, we become. Like, anybody that, that lives in the hood, that if you don't want your child to become a product of that environment... You have to either a keep them in a hundred percent of the time or move out of that environment, right? Because unfortunately, that environment is going to get in them yeah. if they're raised there. Period. Right. Let me let me let me uh, tap in. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Be smooth on the phone, trying to fix a few things um, in regards to the sound. Um, no, no, no. I see, see, you going somewhere else with it because you're not paying attention. You finish your phone. I got you. Um, I love you, but but. Um, for those that are tapped in <coughs> on Facebook Live, because I'm, I'm checking your fees, I want to ask y'all a real, real question, and I want y'all to be straight up. And, and J-Rock and Be Smooth too. hearing what Nate just said, he just used the word nigga. How did y'all just take it? Now, until they start chiming in, until they chime in, Be Smooth, when he just used the word nigga, you can look at color, look at the culture, whatever you want. When he just used it, how did it make you feel right now? I was cool. I ain't, I ain't going to lie. Um, I, I'm, I'm good because, because I'm, in, I'm in a different place right now. Right. I'm in a different place, but how I was taught. Right. You get what I'm saying was not to let that happen. And if if any white dude uh, go ahead and says nigga this nigga that whatever the case may be, it was a smack in the mouth every single time. Right. That's how I was brought up. Right. But 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 where I am now is it's a it's more of less where you come from. Right. And how you use it. Right. And what you mean by it versus not, you, no keep going keep versus going. versus oh just because it's a it's 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 a white dude you could hear. Right. If somebody's authentic or not. 100%. Right. 100%. But, but, but I'm going to tell you this. Now, now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, if Nate was with me, mm -hmm. and you, re it, 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 we was getting ready to dog walk you off this building. Not, not dissing you, not dissing you. But I don't even think it's a pass. I think it's yeah. a cultural, the, the, the word. If I was to say, if I was to say, call you a fool, if I was to use the word fool right now and say, say, um, you, be you a fool, you will act up. That's disrespectful. It's disrespectful if I call you a fool. But then what if I say, boy, you a fool on them ones and twos. It's, it's different, always, it's different it's, context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the way you say it's it. all and that's context. Just, that just goes in, in any, 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 any word if, that you choose yeah. to if I, express. If, if I told you, call, 
told you that you were a fool on them ones and twos. The word fool now is a word a compliment. that it became a compliment. Yep. But you ain't a fool on them ones and twos. We, we really can you fool with the ones and twos? Can <laughs> <laughs> you fool with them? Can you fool with them? No. <laughs> I say that. I say that to say this. I say that to say this. Got him. Um. I say that to say this. Were when my mom used to tell me when I was young, I used to go to school, and um, if I didn't fight a black, I would say, "Mama, he called me a nigga." Right. Because I knew when I got home, I got a homie to this day that that's what he'll say in order to 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 make the fight happen. Right. Or he called me a nigga, pal. Man, why you do but, that, homie? Or he called me right. A nigga. But but guess what though? <laughs> My mom didn't tolerate it. Right. If I came home for fighting, she put them hands on me. My mom fight like a dude. She's not. Ain't no man. We weren't getting belts. You got hit with everything in the house. And she fight like a dude, so like them jabs, Ooh. like, Ooh. yeah, like a grown man, right? And she grew up around Michael Spinks and them, and we used, her family used to fight their family. So they family, yeah, yeah. they was, I ain't going to get into that because I don't even want to wake up a sleeping so giant. You got bolos. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. right. But, but I say that to say this. One thing my mom was serious about when, being young, she said, she used to tell us that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And I believe when it comes to uh, uh, when it when it comes to racism, the N word almost doesn't apply today. And I say that to say this: you got everybody saying it. Everybody says it. Everybody. It's part of the culture. Yeah. It's 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 become hip hop culture. It became hip hop yeah, culture. Right. It became um but I was I was looking at an interview between Jay Z and Oprah. Mm -hmm. And Oprah said, um Jay Z, you use this word and he was like, Well, the word doesn't mean that to us no more. And she was like, Well, I don't like the word because we people died over it, and people didn't die over the N word. People kill people. Words don't kill people. Uh -huh. It's no different than guns. Guns don't kill people. People kill people with guns. With guns. Yeah. I. I. I even today, y'all forgive me. I stay strapped. I stay strapped. I keep a pistol on me. Um. I don't got it on me right now. Um. But. Um, my little sister April just said right now, she said, nigga versus nigger, two different uh, meanings. Absolutely. Um, I think the community, check, check, check. I think the community today um, should grab hold of that. Um, if good. God being God and gave Adam dominium, dominion, dominion. To, 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 Mm -hmm. Call things, name things. Um, we have the power to. We have the power to give a word meaning or take the take uh, to give a word power or right. take power from a word. But if you look, sorry, y'all. This mic is that's just terrible. If you look, culture has always been able to depict and demonize right. what they choose to. The N-word being one of them. The N-word in, in its true form, whenever, b before the slang came with the A at the end, it just meant ignorant person. Now, when a person with hate in their heart right. used that word and chose to label a people group with it, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of similar to, to calling a woman the B-word. Mm -hmm. You've now called that people group Oh, well, you be whoop, whoop, whoop. You understand right. what I'm saying? But right. yet, still, those those ladies that call each other B, A, B. Yeah, yeah. but it's cool. Like, hey, but if somebody called them like, one, right. oh, they finna right. get right. hot and bothered because and hot, hot in it. It's, it's a <laughs> word of endurment yeah. amongst sisters. Amongst yeah, and right. the same way that we have used the N word amongst our peer group, 
Right. If you're kind of ratchet, they use it amongst themselves. <laughs> you understand? No, <laughs> Sylvia. Just being real. <laughs> It, the, it it's it's definitely what's in a person's heart in the way that they use the word. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Because just the same way that he used, hey, stop being a fool. Mm-hmm. And then hey, he used a fool on them ones and tools. It's the context of whatever the, the condition of the heart right. is. But I wasn't it. saying he was a fool on them ones and tools. I was saying he's a fool on them ones and tools. Like yellow bus fool. Like, like. We still don't fix the mic. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. So, so look, 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 look. Not to change it, mm-hmm. but to get up off of the N-word. N-word. And let's just, no, because the, we can do the N-word all night. 100%. I want to. <laughs> For real, though. I want to get on the topic of interracial uh, relationship. That's mm-hmm. fine with me. Um. I know, I know you, Nate. Um, what's your nationality and what's your wife's nationality? Um, so if you were to do like the 23 and me or right, the heritage right. on me, <laughs> right? The I'm predominantly Portuguese, Spanish, and white. Okay, so several white. different kinds of whites. Yeah, you're, right, right. So right, we could right. just say European. Right. We could just so it's cool. I'll be white. I'm probably like yeah. four different blacks. Yeah. No, you just oh, you a black. dark black. black. You so really? black and your teeth so gold black, when you like smile, you look like a black. Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> helmet. I don't know about, I ain't even finna about do this four different job. times. Black, 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 Anyways, black, black. so I yeah, I, I, I'm the white one in the marriage and my wife is Mexican. Okay, okay. Um, what is it like? What is it like? He said Natus Uso and Toco. I, I definitely am that too, bro. Because <laughs> uh, he big. Uh, uh, got him back <laughs> with the black job. <laughs> right. No, no. Um, what is it like? What is the culture like in the home? Um, it's a mixed culture because my my wife is whitewashed. Oh, I'm probably mm. I'm probably more Latin. Than Terry, she is. oh Terry, uh oh Terry, <laughs> Terry, you shots you, fired. Terry, <laughs> let me ask this before we go into it. Can Terry cook? Yeah, she can cook. What she cook? She can cook. She's uh. What she specialized in? <laughs> she, no, she can make she can make Italian some, spaghetti. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, she don't. No, she make Mexican food. Okay. She put we cool because we both hood. If you don't quit. Right. You see, she spelled cuz, C-U-Z. Oh, yeah, I know. That's funny, that. cuz. All right. <laughs> uh, but no, no, go ahead. Back no, I mean, it's, it's, a, um, it's a melting pot, bro, because it's, my wife isn't, yeah, she's way more proper than I am. Right. Like, she'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm ghetto. I'm hood. Even to her, she's like, will you stop being like that? I'm right. like, what? This is what you signed up for. Mm. Oh, this is me for real, for real. Uh-huh. And y'all know me for uh-huh. real, for real. I don't be fronting. <laughs> it's just me, wow. period. I, mm-hmm. yeah, I am righteously ratchet. Uh oh. In a couple different ways, but um. Yeah. <laughs> but my wife, she wasn't raised in a home where they spoke fluent Spanish. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like her parents, they didn't want them because they didn't want them to be um, chastised. Or, like, because a lot of, if you look at, like, a lot of the little Mexican kids, when they're younger and all they speak is Spanish, if they don't, if they can't speak English, they get picked on, bro. Right. A lot of them, they, they stay in a little box. Right. So her parents didn't want that for them. So it's, 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 she's kind of far removed from right. that culture. You feel what right. I'm saying? That's what I meant to say. Right. I was saying all of that to say that she, she didn't experience it or, in, um, she didn't embrace it, and it wasn't instilled into her as right. deep as it was into her parents right. and their brothers. Her culture was her 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 culture is more of an Americanized. Yeah, uh, for culture. sure. Okay, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, hey, um, be smooth. Um, no, I ain't gonna ask you. I ain't gonna ask you. I ain't gonna <laughs> ask you. Uh, I'm gonna get with J Rock. Mm-hmm. J Rock. Um. Yeah. What's it like being in a in a interrelation interracial interracial relationship? But but not even that. Tell the world what rela- <laughs> what, <laughs> what ethnicity you come from because I ain't never seen good hair like that on a Native brother. American. Oh no, I mean I'm black and Filipino. Oh, I thought are that was. Really? Are you? Yeah. I didn't know I that. Thought you were Samoan. You know what? I could tell. And I thought you know, she was mentioned, but you man, proved me. Oh, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm no, nah, for real though. I could Black tell. Black Filipino. 
I knew it was some because mm-hmm. you be having your eyes look like you be smoking weed. Yeah, and and everybody probably still think I do, but I don't. No, I know you don't. I've been restored. I know you don't. Thank you, Jesus. No, Amen. but real talk. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it like? Um, what is it like? Um, in the house. Well, in the house is it's 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 lovely. You know what I mean? I, I think the the raising of our children is um it it kind of gets on two different levels because my wife is used to a different way because she's she's white and Indian. Uh, me being being black and Filipino, I, I obviously raise my I, I, I instill in my children a little bit differently than um, a white upcoming. Um, but inside of our household, I th- I just think it's beautiful. It's just my wife is more of a she she do anything for her kids, which I love her for. Right. It's like, yeah, mom, can I have this? Mom, can I do this? Can mom, can I? She's like, yes, yes, yes. She says, when I come in, I'm like, hey man, you need to ask me, because there's some things that we need some discipline in and some restrictions on, so you can understand the meaning of life and what you're going to be getting into. Because if we constantly tell you yes, 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 when you get out in the real world, it's not going to always be yes, yes, yes. 100%. Not at all. So, right. um, but I think on the outside looking in, when people see me in an interracial relationship, it gets frowned upon. Right. You know. Uh, that brother, he, he with a white girl. Why couldn't he get with a sister? Or why couldn't this happen? And then, you know, we go someplace to get that, that upper lip look. You know what right. I mean? And it's like, I didn't ask for the relationship that I'm in. It's what I was drawn to. Just like I was drawn to Christ. Right. That She was made for me. Yeah. So whatever God gave me, I'm going to love her. Whether she was white, whether she was Mexican, whether she was black, whether she right. was Italian, whatever the, whatever she was. Right. Or whatever she is. That's that's my wife. And I love her to death. And that's just what it is. But outside looking in, yeah, it gets frowned upon. It doesn't matter if I was going to the South. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. With a white girl on my, high, on my hand. Right. Boy, if I get stoned. Man, Thinking, you, you, so, so, you so know how to stay out of trouble at home when you come on the radio. <laughs> I be wanting some dirt. He don't never get no dirt. He makes sure he keep that house in order. There ain't no well, there there ain't, there, go there ain't no dirt. Behind. She put him in the headlock. There ain't no dirt. No, 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 no. no. But, but so in 2019, bro. But it's. it's you, you mean to tell me in 2019. You, you still gets frowned upon. Even even more so. Right. Now, <laughs> just think if I was to go to a, a, a hip-hop concert or, or something of that nature. Even right. if I was to go to, to an event where it was just prominently brothers and sisters. Why don't you think that me going in there with Crystal on my, on my hand, they wouldn't be looking at me like... Yeah, but there's going to be another you and Crystal up in there too. Right, and they're going to be getting looked at the same way. And right. then there's going to be a... Uh, 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 um, a, a, a Tamika and a, and a Bobby <laughs> and, and a Bobby, just yeah. like my homie. He 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 married him a sister. You feel me? And and I'm pretty yeah. sure they get looked at the same way. But I mean, he's attracted to blacks. That's that's, that's, that's all he. he but loves. if you but see the difference is is in this, and that's also it comes to it in a um, cultural and an environmental thing. Right. When people look at you like that, like they ain't gonna look at you like that if it was just one or two more. Of them. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. If it was predominantly one race, then they start to turn their nose up at you. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Because they become a product of that environment. Mm. People want to be accepted so bad that they're not even being the real them around these other people. Right. Or they might just be being the real them and they just that ugly inside. Yeah. Right. It's, it's either one of them, but it's always, you can always trace it back to the environment that somebody is in. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you was to go to a, a, a concert like that with a whole bunch of, like a whole mixing pot, ain't nobody going to say nothing. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, they're not going to say nothing, but you, you, you know, you can read people. Right. Body language speaks louder than mouth. Exactly. Too, for sure. So we, so I watch all these dudes go out there and um, everybody tries to a lot of people that does ministry try to bring change to the community. Um, and this is, it's easier for you to go in and minister to this person because you black or you from the hood or it's easier for me to minister to my people. Um, I believe at the end of the day, they all God's people. Facts. Yep. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I've been loved on by whites. I've been loved on by blacks. I've right. been, all oh, you talking about in this CHH thing, the Mexican and Latinos 
community supports man. us the most. Man. Yeah, for real. Like, when I say the most, the love is just so genuine and real. Um, where do y'all see us? And any one of y'all can answer the question. If I was to take this back to slavery to now, and we make such a big deal about race today. Have just in your lifetime, we won't even go back that far. In your lifetime, from birth up until now, have you guys seen a growth in the right direction? Yep. Yep. I mean, because if you even think back about when we was kids, the Rodney King thing. Right. And all of that that happened. And then the the uh, the riots in, in in Watts and South Central and all of that. I mean, look, look how long it's been since something like that has happened. There's been some some detrimental things, but it's such a that's a big question because that's a loaded question because I think we as a people group, every single race has been desensitized. Because of these police shootings and just the, the amount of violence that we've encountered and, and had to overcome and the, the trauma that we've experienced and in our own lives. That's where real racism comes into play. You understand? Yeah, that's when really when people have power, that's when the real hate and racism comes Man. into play for sure. So I would say as a, as a people and as a nation, it's still there, but I wouldn't say that it's as prevalent as it once was. I might have to disagree with you, partner. Uh, I think it's more, I think it's, I think we're still on the same page. Like it hasn't went up, went down. It's just more, it's okay now. You get what I'm saying? Like it's okay to, to say, uh, to go up in a, in a, in a church and blow it up or, or, or say that you don't like this and, you know, go up and, 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 and the thing is now that we in this social media era, it's being more publicized. And I just I think what we what we're witnessing right now is not a level up or a level down or has it gotten worse or if it hasn't gotten man if you want to talk about police brutality has been for years you know what I'm saying so that's nothing new right. but 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 saying is has it has it has it elevated or decreased what what major what? things have happened that you've seen it blow up and be detrimental in this last decade in the last decade. Yep. Well, compared got, to back when we was kids and the Rodney King thing and what happened with all of the, the riots and all of that, like, has there been anything of that magnitude? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What? Absolutely. So you're talking about the... I'm the, just asking. I'm, I'm asking you. So, like, what, so what has it been? Is, is the, the, as far as the riots and whatnot, the ones in KC at the Ferguson. Mm -hmm. That was huge. You get what I'm, that was oh, huge. That was almost getting to the point of the LA riots. You get what I'm saying? But it got it got deaded. You know what I'm saying? Just because one, it was it was publicly uh, it was out there like that. And so they had the to cops do something. That was that was fighting for sure. You know, what I feel you on that. Quick. Okay. So so are we see? And this is why I don't. I love these kind of conversations. And but, social media does have a big play, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, but, but so does the media. But, period. Right. right. They inst it's, it's instigated. The uh, they put period. out there for a reason. This so it can yeah. get fed. Yeah. If you'll notice, you'll always see the media drives the current through the culture. And right. right, Ferguson. That's but, what I'm saying. Yeah. But but was Ferguson that? I mean, I don't. Well, we can't we can't say Ro police Rodney brutality. Rodney King didn't die. Ferguson did. Well, I don't I don't know because because now this is the thing. This is the thing. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Ferguson is Mike Brown. Yeah. And that case, my family, my family, y'all know. My family was in the heart of it, getting uh, gassed, uh, um, being forced to uh, um, in those work right, gassed. right. They in yeah, there. Right. And now I can take I, you I to the footage. That. I can take you to, I got photos of my cousin got the photos of the autopsy in there taking the pictures on behalf. Right. I got a cousin. He's like the Johnny Cochran of, 
of the state of Missouri. <laughs> but when I looked at <coughs> Ferguson, and St. Louis is no different than Chicago. It's in the county or the whites where blacks do reside. And in the city, the blacks are in the city, and you don't ride down the street and see whites. Right. You just don't, yeah. right? I've been there. But when mm -hmm. I looked at the forefront, I seen blacks, whites, um, 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 Filipinos. I seen everybody on the front line. So I can't, I don't know if I can agree and say there's been zero growth. Now, Black Lives Matter doesn't mean that black lives only matter. Right. There was a saying. It's saying what they were addressing was the conversation right. yeah. of black lives. Yeah. Uh -huh. But for us to say, for us to sit here today, <laughs> today, and say it's been 40 years since the civil rights movement. For us to say that it has not, that we have not evolved, is, 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 it's almost... Well, even if you look at it like in Ferguson, that's why you've seen so many different cultures, because everybody's fed up. Right. It's not just black people are fed up. Right. It's people like me. Right. That are fed up. It's, it's it, Mexicans that are fed up. It's Filipinos that are fed they, up. It's Indians that are fed up. And it, that every, affected a culture. Exactly. Not a race. Right. It affected a culture. Right. A culture worldwide. Even in Ferguson, do you know why they keyed in on Ferguson and not St. Louis when Ferguson is St. Louis County? Because St. Louis City is predominantly black. Mm -hmm. This St. Ferguson is no different than saying Spring Valley. Um, whites, blacks, uh, the schools are multicultural. Like, like, even not too far, you can drive five minutes and be over in U City where Nelly them from. Yeah. There, there, it's the county, but but these dudes are also hood. Right, right. Um. I seen some different when I seen the Mike Brown thing. I seen some different when I seen uh, Trayvon uh -huh. Martin. Uh -huh. yeah. Now I seen individuals point them out, um, but I wouldn't. I, I ain't no way. You seen some different, but you seen the same slang though. What do you mean the same slang? How they get killed? I I don't want. I, I and this <laughs> the thing. This the thing. I'm but just saying, I mean, if, if, if we're going to speak on if we're going to speak, we're going to... I think if we speak on it, I think if we speak on it, if you speak on it, um, I think you have to put, put all the information in front of you to fe find out um, was the man justified or not. The only I, reason why, I, just because of that law, the stand your ground law in Florida, is the right. only reason why. But, so... Zimmerman. Yeah, I don't even know that, that dude's still <laughs> breathing. I don't know who that dude's still breathing. That, but know. so it's one thing for him to be acquitted of the law, right? But could you imagine how that family feels? Who hasn't this, been acquitted hold, though? Hold on, no. But can you imagine how that family feels with this fool signing packets of Skittles, like autographing? Packets of Skittles, bro. Because that's what Trayvon had in his hand. Trayvon just left the store. I mean, not Trayvon. Not, not Trayvon. I can't say. And it is culture. It's not, it's not police fearing blacks. It's culture. Like, hands down, um, during all this time, right over um, off of 30 seconds, um, out here in San Diego, they sprayed up like the police shot like four or five uh, um, Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Like it's cultural. Like like they pull out on the essays the same way they pull out on 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 us. They pull out on the Filipinos the same way they pull out on us. So it's law, it, law enforcement against the world. Yeah, it, right. They're but, the biggest but, gang. But but but, but, gang. but to be honest, to be honest. Um, in these departments, there's black officers in the department. Yeah, right. Who's doing the same things as, as the next person? And they are they're they're partaking in the God it, complex because, too. Be, it, and, and, and but I believe I believe 
I believe they have a brotherhood no different than Crips do. 100%. They do. Right. 100%. It's the same. Yeah, same right. Time. It's the same. And so, they abuse so their power too. So if it's the same, if it's the same, yeah. is it, is it, is it cultural or is it black? It's cultural. Because, and, and, and the reason I say that is, the reason I say that is, um, I don't believe they're going to, the, the same officers would do, have the same actions um, in Delmore. They're not. But at the same time, at the same time, can you put blame on on officers being offended by this? I mean, not offended, but in a position of protection from this culture when every song that come out of your mouth is I'm high on the molly and I got choppers in my trunk and I'm killing this and I'm shooting that. And so they're, they're working their workload off of being stereotypical against who they see on the street then. Do we not make them stereo stereotypical? Not at, I'm no. asking. You don't think so? I don't think we make them stereotypical. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because not every police we, officer is listening to the same stuff that... that, that I'm not that, saying that. I'm not know? saying that. I'm saying the multitude of people. Why y'all standing up? Because we can. Even if the, we stand up and you stand up, you'll still look like you're sitting down. So don't, stay don't, right don't get it twisted like, like, like I'm... Don't eat the bait. Like I'm not in tune with what y'all saying. I, I just want y'all to see the full picture oh, yeah. of what's going on, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think we've painted, our culture has painted a picture of a target on their back. I'm, you're telling me from the gate, the majority of you, of, 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 of that culture is not in the right mind state. They hire drunk. You've You've told me you guys carry choppers. I'm a killer and a shooter. So are they targeting those who look he, like he's like how we look? Or are they targeting the guys? What in, he's in, talking in the about suits, is though. he's talking about what the the, inter, the entertainment industry has done, and what they've done is they've pretty much done a good job of making the black culture look negative, right? In the world's eye view. Because of the hip hop culture, because of the Molly, because of the lean, because of the choppers, because of all of the dope, because you understand what I'm saying? Right, but it's not only the black culture they've been who's doing the Molly. They've been and, prostituted. And doing all that, though. Yeah, the, no, but they've been prostituted and they've pretty much become the scapegoat. What I'm not, trust me when I tell you I'm not justifying their actions. What I'm saying is if you go outside, dressed in red, in a crip community, you've made yourself a target. They're going and targeting those who are dressed in red. I'm going to, Bluto. let me tell you, when I go to if the If you club, were a police officer, would you not go and target those who would look like you and I? Let me tell you or, something. Or, or, yeah, or you know what? Or, or you know why? If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm in the process of cleaning up the streets, yes. Yes. And if you, if, if we, like right now, um, everyone's in L.A. talking about um, a gang truce. Do y'all know how the how gangs have died down? Oh yeah, they went in. They started targeting those that look like gang members, and gang banging has gotten quiet. Mm -hmm. It's not the beast that it was when Just we gang bang. Three it's weeks up until Nipsey got killed, though, it was turned up. That those three I mean, weeks prior to no, if you if you actually do your homework in that neighborhood in that part of L.A., it was turned up. I, I, the, mo the most it has been in a long time. Bro, I will not, you will not tell me in 2019 game banging. Not, was, not back in was, the 80s and early right. 90s when if, we did it. Right. No, oh. no. I, I mean, there's issues, shootings, killings that take place in every neighborhood. Um, that's not what I'm saying. Game banging today is not game banging how it was when right. we were young. Definitely. No, not at all. Um, um, You make yourself a target when you provide intel for your culture. You're giving them intel on your culture. You're telling them that I am a killer. I don't know. I got a partner that put lyrics in a song and faced a life sentence behind it. Mm -hmm. Right? 
you're telling me that you carry straps. You tell me that you're high off on narcotics. You tell me that you're drunk. Look what they try to do with Mitchie Slick out here in San Diego. Well, that was and his partner that right. ended up. Well, that's dead. my partner who I'm talking about, okay. Tiny Dude. That's my okay. real bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, so Brody had to fight for his life. Right. Right. But not even on him. Our culture has made us targets because I'm telling you right now, you, 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 and myself, we've walked in nightclubs, and when you walk in, you see, hey, dog, them goons over there. Mm -hmm. yep. Easy. We profiled them. Yep. And then you like, hey, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I have my homie D-Smoke. He had the biggest foot. Hey, go to the car, grab the 25 or the 22. They can You can fit them both in your shoes. Mm -hmm. Come back in, yeah. and he'll come in. We'll go in the bathroom, and I, yeah, we strapped up. No, we don't got the yapper in her, but we in her. Why? Because I just profiled. Right. And that's the same thing the law is doing. What's wrong with them profiling when you've made when you've carried on the when you've painted this picture, you've had these actions to be profiled. Did we reality is, and I don't want to uh um uh, stray too far from those on social social media because I want to tap in if y'all asking questions. Um, but but they just tapping in with their comments yeah. and stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we we stay following them. Yeah. Um, I think I think this is a target that we placed on our back in today's society. I'm not going to say that it hasn't carried on from then. <clears throat> but I don't think we've helped it. <laughs> As a whole. As a whole. Oh, no. I think we've made it we've, worse. No, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's become celebritized. It's glamorized, right. it's it's glamorized, glamorized period. I, Negativity is glamorized. So, so, so exactly. Jay Rock, that's why the positivity of what Nipsey did wasn't glamorized until after he got killed right. because you knows yeah. the game bigger. Right. So, so... When you're talking about stereotypical, so when I when I when I was in the military and they sent me to the sandbox, it was our job to. They sent you there because. Yeah, so it was it was my job to be stereotypical. That was like a position. Yeah, I had to go to the oh, box. You okay. get what I'm saying? So because if you didn't if you didn't stereotype no one, that was your head. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? You got to know what a, what a what an AK looked like, popped out over a robe. You got you you know what I'm saying? You got to know. What a limp in they in they in they left foot meant. You get what I'm saying? You gotta or or that or that was it. You get what I'm saying? So your life, right? That was it. So you wasn't coming back home. So on the cops level, they're taught the same thing. They're trained to profile. They're trained right. to profile right. for they not for the not only just for, for the for safety the public of the people, safety. but for the public safety. Right. I mean, I totally get what you're saying. I'm just saying that that you got brothers and of all ethnicities who wear suits. That don't wear the, the baggy jeans and all. Well, they wear tight jeans. And they do the most crime. Now. They do the most crime. <laughs> they do the most crime. <laughs> but you got cats like six nine cats out there that, that are making it glamorized to to do the molly and <laughs> things that are putting that target on right. the back. I He's hear what snitch. you're saying. Right. Yeah. I I I think if you go on, if you want to nip something in the bud, you got to hit it at its root. Facts. I mean, um. I understand. It's not that different. I, it's, I, I think it's all the same. I'm just, I'm, I'm. Uh, I fully understand mm -hmm. the whole Black Matters, uh, uh, Black, Lives, Black Matter. Lives Matter movement. I understand that that was specific to police bro brutality right. targeting young black men. But don't forget that I, I don't know Trayvon Martin's also life, but I do know. Michael Brown right. just got done stealing some blunts. Right. <laughs> and he <laughs> had had prior conflict with the police. Right, right. right. And, the, and, and and well, not only that, but in that community, it, those yeah. those communities have are like subdivisions. Right. They don't have they're there's this is not the San Diego Police Department. Mm. Their their office is probably as big as the this studio. Like, don't get it twisted right. like this is a big old um, uh, facility. But, but, um, 
But if you look at Black Lives Matter, you'll look at how the LGBTQ came and they just literally exploited a people group. Mm -hmm. right. Because if you look on the Black Lives Matter website, mm -hmm. it's all LGBTQ propaganda. And the person pouring money into it is an older white dude. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And it, it's pushing that homosexual agenda. So all they did is they seen a, a people group and literally exploited them. I don't think they really exploited them. How I did they not, though? I just, I, this is my thing. And, and y'all judge me if you want to. I believe their issue is homosexuality. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to tell me that their heart is not, they don't have good Good hearts. I I don't know. I've hung with 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 homosexuals. Sex, not all of them. Call them. Yeah, and they've but, been but some they, of the coolest they people. They are I some met. of the coolest people. Right. Yeah. But but for me, that is a that is a, a issue that God has to deal with them as individuals. Yeah. Right. However, I do know this: they're they I they're not with the uh, that community is really not with the violence. Um um, they believe. I, they're pushing their agenda no different than than I would push my agenda how I push my agenda for the Lord like I'm serious about God so I push my agenda to the fullest extent they or homosexuality they homosexuals I don't even know what to call it homosexuality uh, <laughs> they push the agenda but I don't I do believe they understand I'm talking I, about the people group though I'm hold on this is what I'm saying I believe I believe because They've been singled out. They can un they have a, a understanding of the African American lives mm -hmm. that have been targeted, mm -hmm. being singled out. I think they can relate, right? Um, you doing that work for them right now? No, I'm not. I'm just <laughs> sharing my I'm sharing my no, opinion. I'm, I'm sharing my opinion. I'm sharing my opinion. I think their motives was in the right place. I okay. think they were. I understood that, but. I can't sit here and focus so much on Black Lives Matter and, and police brutality on blacks when the larger number is black on black. Facts. 100%. Facts. Absolutely. I can't, I, 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 I can't focus on 5% right. when the other 95% percent is our own community. Right. Be right. mad at me if you want to. I hear you. But, no. but how, how is it? How is it? Nipsey Hussle's situation has more ha, has more uh, uh, publicity than Mike Brown and the Ferguson one. I mean, Mike Brown and uh, because of uh, the righteous uh, acts that he did. Right now, the righteous acts that he did. How come how, in this situation we know of his righteous acts? He's been the only inner, he's been the only rapper in history. That has a righteous act mm -hmm. and music saying giving a different message. Right. That's true. That's true. Huh? Now I was just talking about Oh yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, play yeah, some yeah. Deals. Let's get it. Yeah, we're gonna get into some music. The conversation was so good, I could have did this all night. <laughs> we gonna dive back into some music right here on God Radio1.com. <laughs> Shipping my savior and following his love. Put your own by the fingertips. Life is on the line. 
so you know I ain't gon' play with you Always on my grind and I'm living like I never lose I ain't gotta worry cause I know where I'm headed to Oh, too many hoes in the mind Like people live in the mind So cause they live in the mind I don't want you to say Never for money and pain Jesus is a Where a soldier fall And as his homies pour liquor on the floor These youngers strapping up to go to war Cause the only the bro that's gone It's protocol to pack two straps like overall See your four and draw and leave them leaking Laying on the floor And as long as the street code is long There will be no resolve This is why this cycle keeps going on So who will teach a thing or two About the king of Jews To a people that fight like they do not have a thing to lose Who will give them the gospel Before their fingers pull on the trigger They can know Christ but who will bring the news Who will provide the cure in these sick times I live amongst the walking dead I'm like Rick Crimes But no I'm not happy Stepping like Herschel, I'm fighting till I see Christ church move. We gotta put your heart on the fingers. Life is on the line, so you know I ain't gonna play with you. Always on my grind and I'm living like a never lose. I ain't gotta worry cause I know where I'm headed to. Oh, too many homies of mine like to put live in the box. So cause they live with the money. I don't want you to the same, living for money and pain. Jesus is the only truth. I could put you on to a thing or two I just wanna see if you believe what you say you do You're married to the black, she a thot and she playing you You loving her, but all she ever done is middle finger you She make jailbirds out of hustlers Fiends out of customers Sold you a dream to get cream out of touching her Hugging her And when she get hot, she kick you out and let the feds all up in her Listen up, boy, a sucker, I ain't never been And I ain't say I never sin I know that we all sick Beg to the president I just know somebody else in heaven with the medicine If you ain't never lived this hard as you live that I just wanna see what'll happen if you did that I'ma go hard for the Lord to the death of me For me, putting God over money was the recipe Time put your own by the fingers Life is on the line so you know I ain't gonna play with you Always on my grind and I'm living like a never lose I ain't gotta worry cause I know where I'm headed to And that's the one he was talking about Just having fun Time put your own by the fingers Life is on the line so you know I ain't gonna play with you Always on my grind and I'm living like a never lose So check this out. We back here in the studio. Uh, Westside is Wild Worship Wednesday with your boy Dante, yeah, yeah. J Rock, yeah. Be Smooth on the ones and twos, and we got special guests uh, illuminate in here with us. Um, yeah, we sorry we had to. I want to give y'all some music because man, I I was ready to go in. <laughs> well, well, the DJ kind of told us, hey man, y'all need to play some music. Yeah, he, that's why so, you're a fool. Yeah, he, that's why he a fool Ooh. on the ones and twos. Um, <laughs> but he said you do the fool. He said you do the I ain't tripping, man. I, I, I'm a change, man. It's all good. I want to get back in on this um, racism thing, but from a different perspective this time. Yeah. Um, um, Am I good, Smooth? You good? Okay. I know that. Um, I know the conversation can be picky. I don't believe that God has called us here to change the world. I don't believe that. I think he's called us to change our world. Recruit. Because the world is what the world is mm -hmm. going to be. Facts. And it's already been prophesied mm -hmm. as to what is getting ready to become. Topple yeah. down. So I don't think we're here to change God's mind. I no. think we're here to recruit as many as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so they don't get caught up in the crap. Right. When he come back. Um, but as a church, I think I'll start with illuminating. We'll just go around the room. What can we do as a body to create an impact? Um, um, 
being that Sunday mornings is the most segregated time of the week, right. still to this day, we can be intentional about partnering with other people groups and other, I mean, there's other religious, there's other parts of the body that have the strengths that, that maybe we don't have. So we need to be intentional about fellowshipping with them and about serving them and about getting involved with them. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And stop trying to do everything on our own and pour our resources into a, a moving part that's actually anointed for that and gifted for that and is willing to go do that work. You understand what I'm saying? Right. There's all these mega churches that are holding on to these millions and billions of dollars because they're trying to do things that we're already doing. Right, right, right. Rather than them feel like they have to raise up a, a whole other ministry, why don't you look at who's obviously anointed and appointed by God, get involved with them, and help them on the mission that God's called them to do. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So churches need to start partnering together more, and they need to let these um, denominations, which become total dominations, right. wow. stop blinding them. Wow. And let's actually look at each other as the body of Christ. Right. Because when God sees down here, he doesn't see my, oh, there's my Lutheran kids and my Catholic kids right. and my Assemblies of God and my Kojic kids. Nah, he sees the body of Christ. And That's until good. we come... To, to see the body of Christ in the same way, I mean, it, it's real because he's coming back for a church that's spotless without wrinkle. Right. And, bruh, we got a lot of wrinkles right. and a whole lot of spots right now. And until we get to the place of love and even talking about the racism thing, we need to realize that that's all a ploy of Satan to mm -hmm. divide and conquer. Right. And it has been since the very beginning. That's good. And none of us are going to end racism. It's just not going to happen. Right. We can end it in our hearts, though. Right. And we can end it in our homes. Right. And we could start making a difference in our community if we'll just get out of God's way. Right. And start being intentional about being the body and being the church. Right. Rock. Oh, let's move go. Let's move go. Um, it, it, I, I'm piggybacking on, on what Illuminate said, check this out. I'm, like I said, like all these different, all these, I, I never understood why it's a church on this corner and then it's a church on this corner and then yeah. this church, what is Baptist, what is Kojic, what is all these different things and, and we're supposed to be one family. Right. I always wonder what heaven looks like and it, it, is, is heaven divided? No is, way. Is, is, is the Kojic over here? Is the Baptist over here? Is the Catholic over here? Is where, what does heaven look like? And if we're supposed to be heaven on earth, then at some point we got to stop dividing all these. Well, this is my. It, it ain't nothing but a a, a, a smaller game. It's it, the it, tribal it, mentality. You know. Well, I go to this <laughs> church, and and, yep. and we and we do this this way and that way. If you don't do it that way, then mm -hmm. you're subject to being eighty six. Right. Versus versus bringing in, and that's and that's where you get people um, getting judged. And when people get judged, they they stray away from from Christ in that sense because it's like you judging me, but you're not accepting me. Right. You're so not embracing me. Th yeah, yeah. There, yeah there's mm -hmm. no embracement, and yep. that's what. And if you look at it, if, if from the stories of Jesus, my 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 man's was not subject to four walls. He was going out there to the people. He was he was out there with the hustlers, the grinders, the killers, the the ones that need to be because right. only by that say yo, it was only God that changed it. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I, at the at, at some point, at some moment, somebody got to be bold enough. Some of the leaders, like you say, some of these mega churches, got to be bold enough and say, yo, we done with this. Uh, uh, titles, all these titles and 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 divisions. A lot of people hung up on titles. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it, and and that's why I'm glad where I'm at, where I'm at with with my relationship with God is my relationship with God, and the people I'm with is cool. The highest title we can never have a servant mm. and a son. True story. I'm yeah. good. No, I, I like what both y'all saying. Excuse me if I'm a little hoarse here. You good, bro? No tired. You, you cranky. I, I am. You want some water, bro? <laughs> no. Well, some almonds. Um, I think it just boils down to what, what, is, what does God say in his word on how we're supposed to do. Um, is everybody reflecting that? 
I know in, in everyone's individual walk we are. We're showing love. I know I can speak for my brothers here. We show mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. How does that attract those? Is our love strong enough? Is, is our love in Christ strong enough to, to be able to attract those to show them what real love is and, and where love comes from? Or are they so blinded and, and dismayed and, 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 and from what the world is offering them? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this, this trap that we live in. I mean, even, he's, even he said, he, I'm not of this world. So the world is offering the glamour, the cars, the money, the, the women, the jewelry. The life. That life. The lie. The lie. <laughs> and then you got us as those who come in and say, well, I got something better than that. Right. Don't look the same. Don't look the same. <laughs> But we got something better than that. Facts. Are we doing our part? Is that enough to show the world that we're giving them the love of Christ for them to be able to, to have that seed planted in for them to be drawn near? Because obviously if, if, if we're going out and we're going to these in certain individuals, it's like a treasure hunt. And, and we had this treasure hunt when we, you go and, and, and you pray about the things that, that you want God to reveal to you. And then you go out and you find that person and you go ahead and, 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 and give them the word right. of God. Now, that's an act of God drawing that person to him. So if we go out here and we're showing this love to these people, is that an act of drawing them towards God? Now, that, that, that seed is planted, but you're asking, okay, is, is this enough to, what are we doing to, to change or to, to, to attract those to come to the kingdom? I think if we stay in our lane and do what, what the word is telling us to go do mm -hmm. and be obedient, listen to, to the spirit, say, hey, that's who I want you to go, go speak to because I'm drawing you to, to that person to draw to me, mm -hmm. that I think we're doing our job. I think if we have all these high people in these high places and these high positions and titles say, hey, we need to, we need to come together, yeah, that's going to be a, a, a beautiful move. Yeah. Well, I, I think it will be very powerful, anointed. You got to check the fruit, though. That's what I'm at saying. I was, I was, I was day, just going there. At the end of the day, going there. where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit in your labor? Yeah. I, but here's, here's my question. And, and, and so I didn't mean to cut it, you it, off. No, you, it, I, was it, going, I was going it's, there. It's, you it's, 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 it's cats that, that I, I've been looking like you, if you if you go into the church. Y'all said it. I, I think Hurt said it um, when we, had, we was in Vegas. He says, he says, he said, we had, or it was a truth. We had. Street cats have more faith than some of the cats in the church, <coughs> and it's because willing to die for 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 that for that money for that for for a color for what for just a well we train warriors right wow. yeah. so so now you get into a, a traditional church, and it's hard for somebody that's not in the traditional church to tell them, hey, you wrong. You get what I'm saying? Like if you go tell a uh, a pastor that's been pastor in the church for 20, 30 years, yo, you need to break down some of these walls and do this, that, and the other because this is what the word says. And he's like, nah, we don't accept this. But you a lot of times, though, if you look, when it comes to bringing change, a lot of times the Lord will raise somebody up mm -hmm. from the inside out because a lot of people aren't going to receive a word from the outside, from the outside. like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have that tried and true relationship where they know your heart is really for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And if we can get to that point of getting back to having real relationships like that, that's when we're going to see change start to transcend these denominational boundaries. Right. Um, my personal opinion, and I tapped in on it a little bit earlier, um, I don't think our role and our responsibility as a church is to change the world. I think our job is to find out, is to labor to harvest. Mm -hmm. We get so caught up in politicking, social injustice, um, save, <laughs> save the environment, save the whales. <laughs> World peace. World peace. Um, save ever. dolphins. Don't forget the dolphins. When, 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 when our responsibility is to go out, preach the gospel, 
and preach the gospel to all nations. That's pretty yeah. much what I was saying. Well, I, I caught that. I caught that. Yeah, no, I did too. Um, mm-hmm. I did too. And, and just to really fast, just to whenever say we go out like on a pray for my hood, mm-hmm. or we go out on, on a mission tour as our ministries do, <coughs> I know for a fact that not everybody there is going to get saved. Right. But I know there's going to be another Dante. Right. There's going to be a J Rock. Right. But there's going to be a B Smooth. Or right. a seven, a seven right. deuce, a preach, right. a, an illuminate. Right. right. There's going to be the elect that God has already elected. Right. That there, there's already been the seed planted. Right. And there, it's going to be their day. See, see, we think we think we doing something. No. Oh. God gives yeah. the increase. Right. God gives the increase. God gives the increase. One hundred percent. This, this is um, Acts seventeen, and I'm going to start at um, the twenty first, twenty fourth verse. It says, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by men. Amen. Nor is he served by human hands Mm -hmm. as though he needed anything since he himself gives all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the faces of the earth. Having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. That they should seek God and perhaps feel their ways towards him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. In that 24th verse, it said that God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by men. Oh. We spend so much time as a church focusing on the work that's done inside the synagogue, right. inside the temple. Yeah. That that's only, I would say that's less than 10% of the ministry that we're called to. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's the training ground, though. Exactly, Mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. And I want to get what I got to get out. That's why I gave everybody the opportunity to speak, and I didn't step on nobody's toes when they were speaking. But we've focused so much on the teaching that we forget. Apostleship. Facts. The works of the prophet. Facts. The works of the evangelist. Facts. And the work of the uh, 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 preacher. Well, I won't even say the preacher because the preacher, the preacher really handles. The pastor. The pastoring yeah, yeah. And, the, and the work in the synagogue. The shepherding. Guy. But realistically, if you're not. Behind the scenes, behind the the pulpit or 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 in the offices, your work in the church is realistically two hours midweek, and I'll give you a tops four hours on Sunday if you go to Sunday school and involve yourself in the Sunday service. So you produce six hours worth of work inside the synagogue, mm-hmm. but the work is outside. is outside in the field. If we get on our job as a church, if the body just picked one person to minister the gospel to and disciple. Train that person, equip that person, send that person right back out there to do the same thing. This is the only way the recruiting process is going to be effective. If we don't go out there and recruit, teach, prophesy to, evangelize to, and lead through apostleship or, 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 or pastoralship, then we leave them out there to do exactly what they're doing. And as much as we want to blame the officers for shooting blacks and being racist towards blacks, as much as we want to blame whites for being racist and, uh, uh, towards blacks or blacks racist towards whites, 
if we don't go out there and share exactly who Christ is, we fail to do our job. So before we go pay a bill and, and then end this, there was a question by Carol. She a said, couple of them. A couple um, of them. well, this in particular one, she said, so my question, though, can a person that can't quote the Bible still spread the gospel by having the traits of a godly person? Yes, because you're 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 not ser you're not saved um, by what you can memorize it of uh, in God's word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Dang. You're 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 what? Time. Okay, well, we're going to go a little bit over some yeah, of these like, um, um, <laughs> When I gave my life to, to Christ, when he fell upon me, I was more effective in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Man. Bro, On fire. I would bring, bro, I was bringing 10 people to church at, at a time. The yep. whole hood. Yep. And about seven different type of ministries inside yep. the church. Dude, didn't even cool. know what no Damn. meant. Right. right. But you know you know, right. you know, why know, no you, you, you know why I was able to be effective and why the baby is able to be effective. On fire. Because he's only on fire based off of his experience with Christ. Right. Yeah. He hasn't watered. He hasn't gotten so puffed up with wisdom and right. knowledge to where More he's politics. lost right. right this is why he say speak that this is yeah. why he prefer he say it's better to tie tie a, a millstone around your neck than to touch one of my little ones right he prefer you with a childlike oh, mindset right. right because you're innocent hunger yeah. you're yeah. hungry i was more effective as a baby me too than i am right now now more contagious I, I would say oh my goodness man i got the whole oh yeah i got the whole hood say yeah. uh, uh everybody going to church mm -hmm. everybody yeah. was getting jesus I, I, we I, we need to be discipleship is very important but we need to learn how to train disciple makers as well successes right, yeah. right. you feel it, me all about success i yeah. think i think real leaders raise up, raise up other leaders yeah. right i would say this to carol i would say Study your word to show thyself approved. Yep. Then go out that and uh, go out and fulfill the Great Commission. Because at the end of the day, all you can do is point a person and lead a person in the right direction. Mm -hmm. She he, said, I don't necessarily agree with that. And I think that is why more people aren't closer to God. And, and and it's because of and I'm gonna say this to her because of her 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 I think she's talking to somebody else. Oh she's talking to somebody oh. else. Yeah. Because I was gonna say if to not agree with that, that's God's word. No, she uh, she, she yeah, she 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 replying to you, bro. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this ain't my word, it's God's word. God's word. We are all called to oh, a place mind. of discipleship. Yeah, no, you're right. It is what it, I mean. Um, we are all called to a place of discipleship Absolutely. from day one. Yep. From day one, from day one, when look at the um, the 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 two thieves on the cross besides mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. The one thief went to ministering the gospel to the other thief mm -hmm. just because he believed in that very moment. Right. Mm -hmm. right. He said, "Why do we crucify this man?" Right. Right. Who is innocent. Who is innocent. He's not he, like us. What is he doing in that moment? He's not like us. What He's is not he like us. He's, well, he's admitting guilt. He's what? admitting Christ's righteousness and his guilt. He's, he's, he's evangelizing. But he's evangelizing in that very moment. Right. right. In his sin. In his sin. <laughs> Man. On his way to hell. Man. No word. He recognized Christ no in, in Carol. Him. He's Man. not saying that you have to know scripture to do so. He's saying to get that word in your heart. Because it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. He's not saying you have to know every scripture to go do it. No, no, He's no, saying no. to get in the word and let the word get in you. And then you do what the spirit leads you to do. You don't have to know addresses. You don't right. have to know. Right. You don't, you don't have to know that. Right. So you, you, you took it the wrong way. That's the yeah. that's it's what a learning saying. process. Yeah. Because that'll come too later right. on. I'm, 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 I'm almost 20 years old in Christ. Word? Yeah, I got saved in 2001. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. To, I feel like half of my life I've 
devoted it I'm like two, two to the cross. I'm like two months I'm, 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 <laughs> Think you're atoning for something, man. Hey, man, I, I'm working on getting some things right. But, 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 in the beginning, I knew none of what I knew now. Right. Mm -hmm. I know. I knew none of what I know now. All you knew was Jesus. And that is that's all, all that matters. That's all, that, that's all you need what to What I say is, we are saved by his grace. Yeah, absolutely. Those without law and we are not saved by works. Wow. Amen. Works. I work my butt off for the, for the kingdom, but I don't do it because I have to. I do it because I believe. I love to do it today. Right. You know what I mean? I but do. check this out. We finna get ready to come back with final words. Um, close out in prayer, but right now we're going to get into paying some bills, um, paying some bills and get <laughs> up out of here. Problems, saving, not enough, Friends. taxes, too much, retirement, will it happen? Investments, which ones are right for me? Insurance, how will I build my legacy? At Allen Financial Advisement, we provide solutions to your problems. Allen Financial Advisement is a full-service financial planning firm that offers financial help just where you need it. We can help make you smarter. Allen Financial Advisement provides financial advice with an educational emphasis. Get the answers by calling us at area code 858-964-2309 or visiting us on the web at A-L-L-E-N-Financial-A-D-V-I-S-E-M-E-N-T.com. That's AllenFinancialAdvisement.com. We offer financial advice with an educational emphasis. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. Member FINRA, SIPC, and registered investment advisor, Allen Financial Advisement, and Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. are not affiliated. Make Jesus famous. Hey, everybody. I want to tell you about a brand new clothing line that makes a bold statement. Fresh Fate Clothing, a brand encouraging hope, faith, truth, love, and being unashamed in spreading the good news for Jesus Christ. Feeling a little hesitant in sharing your faith? We can help with that. We encourage you to wear it. Stand with us as we stand with you in sharing your faith in Christ Jesus. Visit our website, freshfaith.com, without the E, F-R-S-H, faith.com. And check out how we creatively incorporate the word of God in fashion. So again, visit us at freshfate.com for more apparel and gear that represents, pushes, and spreads the love for Jesus Christ. So again, be strong and courageous and make Jesus famous. On Saturday, June 22nd, 2019, Albertsons and Bonds presents the San Diego County Fair. This year's theme is the wonderful Wizard of Oz, and it will be Oz. As we celebrate the 15th annual Gospel Festival, an all-day celebration of great gospel music on five different stages. From bands, choirs, and quartets to dance, spoken word, and hip-hop, your spirit will be uplifted with the Toyota Concert Series headliners, the incomparable legendary Clark Sisters. <laughs> Along with the Walls Group. I don't want to be. Don't miss the 15th Annual Gospel Festival at the San Diego County Fair on Saturday, June 22nd. With the legendary Clark Sisters and the Walls Group. For more information, go to sdfair.com. Save the date and be there because it will be awesome. awesome. For real. Was mobbing, little bruh. Even a half truth is a complete lie, you feel me? Come on! Ay, ay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh for a worthy cause. Cause He loved us to the depths of our dirty draws. Was wretched, but yet He took death for all my worldly flaws. Peep the origin. His story's been properly stored within the gospel and popular Greek historian. Child, betrayed by His people, but He ignored it and remained meek. Even the courties in had to resort to sin. They beat and tortured Him. Tried to sweep the floor with Him. Crucified the Messiah despite Him being the holy man. He rested Resurrected in glory and promised to return We won't need a DeLorean to see the Lord again, no uh, He hung high for this dumb guy I'ma preach the gospel from Cali to Mumbai Puts wings on his kings, makes his sons fly A gang of people say they can save you but come shy But yeah. he's real Christ is the real one, and I know yeah. So there really ain't no debate about it yeah. He's real and we won't be fake about it It's all love, bro, so really what you hate about it yeah. Christ is the real one, and I know so there really ain't no debate about it, yeah He's real and we won't be fake about it It's all love, bro, so really what you hate about it? 
favor to worship a savior who was dressed and forgave you. Faith was working through labor. Grace is love for my neighbor. His shining sunlight, blind in a laser. Finding life and living more than a chaser. Now your mind is a razor. For the sheep, he's going deep as a glacier. Feed you meat with the flavor. Bring the heat to the shaker. To the streets, be racer. We just mind a heat major. Salvation, he cater. Now we serving the waiter. In the storm, when we spoke to the waves, then opened the cave. And on the third day, rose from the grave. For the slaves that was trapped in a maze. He turned the night to the days. This is life's not a face. He's deserving the praise. We were dirty, now we stare at lies. Jesus took the wheel with nine care to drive. It made me walk it out when I was paralyzed. So I thank Christ that I could share the prize. Yeah. Christ is the real one, and I know that. So there really ain't no debate about it. Yeah. He's real and we won't be fake about it. It's all love, bro. So really what you hate about it. Yeah. Christ is the real one, and I know yeah. So there really ain't no debate about it. Yeah. He's real and we won't be fake about it. It's all love, bro. So really what you hate about it. Yeah. Christ is the real one, and I know yeah. So there really ain't no debate about it. Yeah. He's real and we won't be fake about it. It's all love, bro. So really what you hate about it. Yeah. Christ is the real one, and I know. So there really ain't no debate.